scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. When you see the Holy Spirit move like this, it's a communication of many things. For many people, it's an indication that seasons are opening. Are we together? Yes, seasons. The weak is living for the strong. See that? The less anointed is living for another dimension. Number two, when you see extended periods of worship in the presence of God like this, there are impartations happening. Impartations are not just anointings, they are answers. Answers. So in that worship, the Bible says, be still and then you will know. You may not hear a rema, but an anointing is bringing an answer. It's not the one you've always received. Number three, in these kinds of atmospheres, deliverances, deliverances, you don't have to fall and shout and call. In these atmospheres, convictions are strengthened. Suddenly a worship song is rising and you just stand and you're just thinking and saying, my life, my life. Will it continue this way, prayerlessness? Will it continue this way? No commitment to God. And whilst the worship, you're not hearing anything directly, but the Holy Ghost is speaking to your spirit, man. And you can capture the impulses of the spirit. So when, when there are extended periods of worship like this, you must understand that the Holy Spirit is doing something specifically. Now, it is good to be excellent and organized. We believe in excellence, you know that. But then I think the challenge sometimes is that there is too much interruption because sometimes we can be so organized we are more conscious of our ego and the rudiments of things you see those who are like that cannot get the best of the holy spirit because his character is the wind is that true the bible says the wind bloweth where it listeth you cannot tell from whence it's coming or where it is going. He says such is the character, is the nature. It's not that the one who is led by the Spirit is disorganized, but that the Holy Spirit sustains an ability to navigate you at will and can be able to alter whatever according to God's divine purposes. Learn it. Learn it. Don't get to a point where you box the Holy Spirit and say you move like this. No, sir. No, sir. That's the reason why we never, never experience certain superior dimensions of him. I tell you, this worship, I can, I, I just wish that I was alone in my secret place and I can sing like this and worship till morning. Not prayer. I'm not talking of praying. Many things should happen in the secret place. If the only thing you do in the secret place is praying in tongues, then there is a lot you are missing. Let me tell you, praying in tongues is very important. But you see, the Holy Spirit must be the governor and the Lord of your secret place. There are times you go to the secret place and for one hour you cannot say a word. You just sit down, yet you are communicating. Because you see, in the realm of the Spirit, your mouth is not the only instrument of communication. There can be a spirit communication happening, yet your mouth is not saying anything. Your mind may even be unfruitful to that experience. But after that secret place, you know that you left with something. It's like an intercourse. Learn it.
this is how to be spiritual it is not longevity in the christian environment that makes people mature it is their ability to have trained their spirits to to train their sensitivity to be able to understand the things that the holy spirit is doing if all that the holy ghost wants us to do tonight is to just sing and sing and worship that's what we do he is the governor he is the one who is responsible for the transformation he knows what menu befits what situation there are people the situation in your life right now sincerely speaking you don't need a sermon you need a song it's only a song that has the capacity to minister to you are we together when you've been beaten by life you've prayed you have fasted sometimes he captures his thoughts in a song and you may like all the songs that we sang here you may not remember anything but there is a line that's where the anointing is the anointing may not be on all the song it may just be on a line a phrase a clause a sentence part of it and you keep singing it till your spirit soaks that anointing are we together you must understand this is how people are edified you see because in a place like this there are people inside outside are we together now and everybody has his needs as a man of god you don't just come with a rudimented understanding you see people will keep looking at you but very soon your church will go dry because the truth is that the holy spirit it, the operation of the holy spirit his omnipresence is a mystery such that everybody can leave a meeting and say you were talking to me yet the experiences were different for many people half of your edification for tonight's meeting has happened in this worship if we did not capture this moment of worship there is something that god intended for you tonight that you would not have received let's learn to be spiritual let's learn to be spiritual let's learn organization is good but carnality is driving the fullness of the holy spirit from our lives from our meetings because of regimented activities organization is good but brothers and sisters we are talking about the spirit of the living god the holy spirit is not an angel when he comes you step back i think his pride to resist the holy spirit i think his sin to resist the holy spirit even if it is for the sake of the breakthrough of one person let's let him do it you hear people shouting it's not a proof that a man is anointed it's a proof that god is working are we together now you left your house and you came and the spirit of god is working the angels of god that excel in strength they are working reading the hearts of men like pages of books oh this one is in need of a healing ah uh, how do we communicate the healing okay there is somewhere in the message where we'll come and they leave you and they go to someone this person is depressed at this level of depression you will not even hear anything so he comes back to the preacher and says raise a song because there is somebody who is too depressed to start hearing any rema no matter what you say it will not bless him it is in that song you find out that everyone may be tired but only two people are crying that song was for them this is called the ministry of the spirit so the holy ghost is ministry you see that it's not it's not charismatism it's not an, an a, a man of god showing his anointed uh -uh. it's the holy spirit this is the only way you bless people L listen let me tell you it's not just by the excellency of speech it's by allowing the holy spirit you must give him right of way i've said it, you can fake power you can't fake relationship you can't fake the secret place we must have the ears that hear and the eyes that see as a preacher as a man of god you are standing here as a servant in partnership with the holy spirit to minister to the needs of people men of god let's never forget that this whole thing is about the people if there are 90 people here who are sick even if i'm teaching on relationship the healing anointing will start flowing you see that because the holy ghost knows 90 people cannot come sick and go just because i planned no 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 the holy ghost will say i know we prepared for this but the hunger of my people is and their faith compelling that dimension of the anointing and a wise man of god 
will be able to say even so come the spirit and the bride come 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 lord jesus someone traveled far to come and get an anointing come lord jesus someone left the hospital with their medical bills to come come lord jesus so after a meeting like this you find out that as people are going home everybody leaves with a testimony or that if you teach religiously a time will come where only a few people a few people not more than 10 out of thousands of people who will be saved let me tell you what members do they love you but the truth is that they are not being changed and they will they may not stop coming but their faith dies when they come they don't expect transformation they, they will not even invite anybody because they know it's an embarrassment or will I tell this visitor now come for koinonia and the visitor says it's half of the service already I've not been blessed my depression is still there the headache is pounding me I thought you said the Holy Spirit is here if you are in ministry or God is calling you into ministry here I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ pay the price before you come and hold the mic give the people something let every meeting be an encounter an encounter from the worship that's why we pray that's why we prepare for every meeting as if it's the last because you don't know whose destiny someone may visit koinonia now once and may not have the privilege to come again so he will live with his perception there's no excuse if you're a pastor here make sure your workers are spiritual i've said it skill is good but spirituality precedes skill you see him playing this thing someone can sit down and be playing the keyboard and what he's playing is music and alter what the holy spirit is doing another person can sit on the drums and just be playing whatever he wants to do another person can hold the mic here and stand to sing and just be twisting your tongue and the people know they are not getting blessed excellence is only useful when spirituality is intact then you can communicate it's the ministry of the spirit let the weight of your glory let it cover us let the life of your river flow let this truth that brings healing let it rain in us let the weight of your glory hallelujah please I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to be teaching tonight wherever we stop if we can finish it because I want us to pray hallelujah I'm teaching tonight on the gifts of the spirit I want you to expect a solid encounter please a solid encounter open your spirit open your ears you're a man of god open your spirit for the sake of your precious members open your spirit tonight's teaching is going to introduce something to our lives by the grace of god i i trust god there is there is somewhere i want us i'm trusting that god will take us it's like a flight in the spirit if we can get there tonight we have made progress but i pray i pray that no flesh will stop us from attaining there first corinthians chapter 12. spirit of god help our weaknesses let us be communicators of spirit and life. The subject of the gift of the spirit 
has scarcely been dealt with especially in recent time in the body of Christ great men like Papa E. Hagen E. W. Kenyon T. L. Osborne and great men and women who ministered powerful in the spirit from the 40s the 50s then the the faith movement and the charismatic revival that swept across the mid 60s down to the late 70s into the early 80s and after that many people have experienced the ministry of the spirit we have written books about the gifts of the spirit not just the gifts but dimensions of operation in the spirit but I think in my opinion and, and may God forgive me if I sound proud but I think there is a very big gap in the understanding of people over the gifts of the spirit the truth is that even those who walk in them cannot properly explain them it's just been from one manuscript theologically communicated to another and so it's, it's largely a repetition but tonight I trust that God will help us to do justice in the name of Jesus Christ 1 Corinthians chapter 12 when Jesus walked the earth Jesus manifested certain dimensions of the Holy Spirit that that caused the people in his day to marvel the Gospels are full of exclamations of shock and wonder as to the invincibility of Jesus Christ three and a half years but he moved in such proportions of power and grace are we together and Jesus began to mentor he taught but he took out his time to mentor 12 people there were other different groups 72 and etc but the 12 people he began to mentor them he taught them on several things and when you read the Gospels you see um, the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, all of them are wonderful. But notice that the communicators did not emphasize the ministry of the Holy Spirit. There were certain dimensions, but there was very little emphasis. It was John, John, John the Apostle. Are we together now? When you read from chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, it was an the entire those scriptures were an exegesis on the personality of the Holy Spirit Jesus was introducing the person of the Holy Spirit to them he called him different names a helper a standby etc etc they had seen the manifestations of Jesus at a certain time he empowered them and sent them two by two the Bible says they returned with wonders yet they did not understand the dynamics of what they were doing. They said, Master, even the demons were subject to us in thy name. And he said, do not rejoice that the demons are subject to you. Let me give you another reason. And then he says, I saw Satan falling. So several things. Do you know, even the apostles themselves did not have a thorough understanding as to the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit did not start manifesting in the New Testament. It's always been there. In different dimensions but no one was able to construct a theology a doctrine out of it and communicate it intelligently to the body of Christ it was Paul the Apostle Paul the Apostle who was granted access to the mysteries of Christ who came to the church in Corinth now theologically speaking the church in Corinth where they were at a period of spiritual renaissance the power of God was breaking out all kinds of things they did not know the name of what was manifesting through them they knew that the Holy Spirit found a lavish dimension of um, um, access to that territory people were prophesying to a point that there was disorderliness so when Paul came Paul knew that he needed to build a theological basis for the understanding of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and then importantly the gifts of the spirit are we together now so Paul now is speaking to them on the gifts of the Holy Spirit verse 4 12 verse 4 please let's be very fast let's trust God for grace hallelujah 
it starts from verse 1 if you read it says now concerning spiritual gifts please give us verse 1 then we'll go to verse 4 it says now concerning spiritual gifts the Holy Ghost is speaking through Apostle Paul I do not want you koinonia to be ignorant meaning that you can be born again filled with the Holy Spirit even walking in the gifts of the Spirit but you are ignorant of the dynamics the inner workings of it and it's impossible to gain mastery when you are trying it takes understanding it says concerning spiritual gifts brethren so he's speaking to people who are born again speaking to those who have had an encounter with the life of God I do not want you to be ignorant let's go to verse 4 there are diversities of gifts but the same spirits there this is a very interesting information notice the construction of Paul Paul is teaching people who he wants to have you can sit down brother or find somewhere if you can't sit on his seat you can sit uh, whatever there he says there are diversities of gifts let me tell you what that means look up please Paul is saying you are going to see people move in dimensions that are unusual dimensions that will stretch you sometimes beyond your normal um, gentleman hold on my friend listen hold on just leave the guy he's crying just leave him there please don't worry let him just shift just shift a little there eh? and leave him let's just leave him with God there and it's all right he was covering the camera thank you there are diversities of gifts listen do you know why Paul brought this because if you understand the gift of the spirit it can stretch faith except you know God there are certain gifts that are controversial in their operation so Paul is saying look the first information church I want you to know is that in your walk of faith you are going to encounter men that will move so strangely in the gifts of the spirit it will stretch your intellect it will stretch your education you are going to see things you are not familiar with but I give you a note it is the same spirit that is operating are you getting that information now so someone can come for a meeting like this and watch people fly under the anointing are we together now and watch people running out by the spirit and say this is this is strange I am not used to the Holy Spirit moving this way. That's why Paul started by giving us this information. That the gifts of the Spirit are diverse. Brothers and sisters, the first information I want you to know tonight is that the gifts of the Spirit are not nine. The gifts of the Spirit are only theologically classified based on the revelation that Paul's exegesis gives us but the gifts of the spirit are not nine that's why the word of god must be studied from the vista of the spirit otherwise all that you will just read is theology it says there are how many gifts diversities meaning there were certain gifts paul did not see but are available the gifts never stopped as nine the gifts are as diverse as the alignment of the saints meaning that you are going to see certain gifts that you may not exactly find a name for them and so chances are that when you see it you're going to say no 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 this may not be of God there are diversities of gifts are you learning something tonight it says but the same spirit when you study God's generals one of the controversies between two of the generals Alexander Doway and um, Maria Woodward Eater. Now listen, Maria Woodward Eater, historically speaking, was the one who brought what we call trans evangelism, a phenomenon where people under a strange influence of the spirit will not only fall under the anointing but will freeze in a position for hours. It's not a phenomenon that they had seen. It was in our meetings like this guy now, he can stand like that for five hours. You can't do that ordinarily with your hand. And you can see people stop like this for hours now watch this they did not have internet and the media was not strong for people to have access to themselves so when alexander the although a great man mighty man whom in the healing anointing when he stumbled across a woman at the other side of the earth 
who was carrying out mighty miracles he found out from her meetings that people were freezing and stopping alexander the way said that woman number one the fact that she's a woman ministering is under the spirit of divination and Maria Woodward Ita said, no, I'm a woman who loves God. God anointed me and called me to be an evangelist. This is a man of God anointed. Alexander Doe was the spiritual mayor of Illinois. But at the Zion city, yet in that level, that, that supposed high level of spirituality, he could not discern that although this manifestation was foreign to him, it was still of the Holy Ghost. This is one of the biggest limitations that the church has given the Holy Spirit. That the fact that God is not moving the way he moved five years ago does not mean he's not the one moving. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. There are manifestations that you see that you may never be able to capture. The Holy Ghost can open your eyes and conjure scriptures together that will paint a picture that reflects that experience. But you will not see it at plain sight. And so chances are that you will doubt the fact that it is God moving in that dimension. Smith Wigglesworth will be moved powerfully under the spirit and he would carry a dead man and punch the man not that he was an angry man he didn't even know what moved him what is the name of that gift listen let me tell you something are you seeing why when he finished teaching he told them i show you a more excellent way a more excellent way of ministering these gifts perfectly because if you lack love there will be criticism there will be cynicism are we together why did you heal this brother by hugging him where is it in the bible that you hug a brother and heal him and so you say this is the devil where is it in the bible that a congregation hold their hands together to pray in tongues that means praying in tongues is demonic publicly are you seeing now and sometimes i have taught us here that the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything a herbalist can show you scriptures here that will cause you to walk in witchcraft many things happen in the bible demons spoke donkeys spoke people spoke in their backsliding state prophets who doubled into divination spoke it takes the spirit to divide the word accurately and show you which was sponsored the part of scripture that was sponsored by the spirit is what we call the word of god Are you getting blessed? There are diversities of gifts. Diversities of gifts. In this end time, we are going to see moves of the Spirit in proportions and dimensions that will bring harsh criticism but will birth the glory of God in unusual ways. Point number two. Please, let's hurry up. Number five. Media, help us. There are differences in ministries. Now, do you know what he's saying? That means under the same gift, the way you dispense it like a pharmacist giving drugs is different. The same gift, but the dispensing of that gift, the administration of it is different. That means you can see three prophets. Are we together? But the character and the nature of that operation is different verse 6 then it says there are diversities of activities but it's the same God who works all and in all so let's get to the gifts 7 but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all now here is the key the gift of the spirit is for the profit of the body the profit of the body the profit of the body not the profit of a denomination not the profit of a man of God not a profit of just an individual it is for the profit of all verse 8 for to one is given the word of wisdom so Paul is classifying them now are we together now 
through the spirit to another is given the word of knowledge through the same spirit please let's run it down next verse to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing take note do you see an s there with gifts not a gift of healing gifts of healing by the same spirit next verse to another oh dear media is playing a lot of games with our our passion let me open it so that i can read it there's no time for this to another faith by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another various or diverse kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues 11 and we stop there it says but all this worketh that one and the same very same spirit dividing unto every man severally as he wills now close your bible and let's talk so paul for the sake of order remember the entire text of first of first corinthians 12 13 14 the entire subject can be summarized in one word first corinthians 14 verse 40 it says let all things be done decently and in order so paul he, his 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 passion is to see that everything is done decently but in order to do that he had to build like a wise master builder and teach them the gifts of the spirit are not limited to nine yes it is true that there are nine gifts theologically defined according to the experience of the present day church theologically speaking the nine gifts let's work with the nine gifts for the sake of understanding um, many of us know that they are divided into three categories the first category is called the revelatory gifts the gifts that have to do with revelation and insight from the realm of the spirit revelatory gifts and there are three of the revelatory gifts the word of wisdom the word of knowledge and the discerning of spirits i'm not going to dwell on all of them i'll just touch them there are a few i want us to just stop there revelatory gifts that's the first classification theologically speaking that the gifts of the spirit are classified into three first revelatory gifts the word of wisdom the word of knowledge the discerning of spirits number two utterance or vocal gifts that's the second classification gifts that have to do with speech communication all the gifts will require communication but that this one's the primary medium for dispensing them is your mouth speech the gift of diverse kinds of tongues the gift of interpretation of tongues and the gift of prophecy comes under this classification the gift of diverse kinds of tongues don't just write tongues diverse kinds of tongues the gifts of interpretation of tongues and the gift of prophecy and then number three power gifts the third classification theologically speaking power gifts and that includes the gift of faith the gifts of healing add s to gifts the gifts of healing and then the working of miracles so three 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 the revelatory gifts that make you think like christ the utterance gifts that make you speak like christ the power gifts that make you act like christ the revelatory gifts make you think like christ the vocal gifts make you speak like christ the power gifts cause you to act like Christ. Are we together? Let's take them one by one. Very quickly. Number one, word of wisdom. What is it? What exactly is the word of wisdom? The word of wisdom is the ability to supernaturally profess solutions to situations and problems. The supernatural ability to profess solutions to situations 
problems, challenges that are beyond your current level of education. Sorry, I'm fast, I'm running. Supernatural ability to profess solutions to problems and situations beyond your current level of education, exposure, physical maturity, and experience. When you sustain an ability in the spirit to communicate divine ideas and solutions to human problems, problems that defy your current level of exposure, problems that defy the, 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 the knowledge that your level of maturity should have brought, your level of education and your level of experience is called the word of stone. Access to supernatural illumination. Access to supernatural understanding. You need it. Now, let me tell you this. Many people have downplayed on this gift of the spirit. You know why? Because in our thinking, we think it is not charismatic. Do you know? Do you know? Truly, let me tell you. This is one of the apex of the apostolic ministry. Not even power gifts. Not revelatory gifts. It's impossible to claim you're working in the apostolic office truly and lack the gift of wisdom. Because the apostolic office is first an administrative office. Jesus himself manifested this. John chapter 8. When you read 1 to 11, it was the, the, the issue of the woman who was caught in adultery. John chapter 8, 1 to 11. We're not, going to, we're not going to read all that because of time, but just write it. John chapter 8, 1 to 11. Jesus was teaching and he sat down somewhere. And then the Pharisees and scribes caught a woman in adultery. You know, every time I read this story, I'm surprised. Where was the man? You see that victimizing women did not start today. No. The man may be part of them. The goal was to pin Jesus. You, you see it now? Let me tell you where you need this gift. Because this our world is full of wicked men and women. Who will look for every and anything to throw you. Destroy your business. Destroy your ministry. Destroy you down. You need the gift of the word of wisdom. And then they came to Jesus. Sorry, there's no time. Let me just quote it. Threw that woman in front of him. And they said, Jesus, you claim you're a prophet. You claim you're a by. Here's a test. We caught this woman in adultery. In the very act of it. Very act means that there should be a man. They said, man, you can go. The woman, let's just go. <laughs> you see how wicked those people were. Then when they threw him, they now said, Moses said, I hope you know that part of the condition to be a true prophet is that you must acknowledge every other prophet that has come. So if Jesus now rejected Moses, they'll say, you see, you're a fake prophet. And if Jesus said, yes, you are right, they'll say, now you have submitted to our religious governing authorities. That was a difficult situation. You will be faced with situations in your life where yes and no will still put you in trouble. Both yes and no will land you in trouble. Your enemies is like penalty. You know how they, they, they pay football and they pin you. You are the goalkeeper. They are about to pay. They, the people are already shaking themselves. It's at that point you need to tap into this dimension of the gift of the spirit. People vow that because of tribalism they will drive you out of your job. The boss says something, your superior and direct boss and the manager says something conflicting statements they carry the file and drop and two of them are calling you let me tell you you don't need education you need the gift of the word of wisdom you obey the one directly under you they sack two of you you obey the one above you you come back and meet the one in your unit it helps us to think like Christ he says let this mind permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus business people need this mind Every leader needs this understanding. And here's what Jesus did. They thought Jesus was going to say certain things. Jesus kept writing. Writing. The Holy Ghost was moving him. The fountain of wisdom self. Then he lifted up his head in confidence. And here's what he said. He who does not have sin. 
he was talking about is another way of saying I'm the only one who is qualified to cast the stone. You get it? And then he said, he, just like Joseph said, find a man who is discreet and wise. It was another way of saying I'm here. Oh. He who does not have sin to cast the stone. And I'm sure he was the oldest guy who was the other party there. And he lifted the stone and he dropped it. Everyone dropped it and he said, woman, where are thine accusers? And she turned. He said, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. Jesus manifested. That was not word of knowledge. That was the gift of the word of wisdom. How many times we have been whipped by life because we lack this. An opportunity that would have honored you. How many pastors who stood before government officials would have made certain statements by the spirit that would have given them access to certain things. Imagine how many foolish decisions our loved ones have taken born again and filled with the holy spirit but not allowing these possibilities find expression you need the gift of the word of wisdom in your life education is limited your experiences are limited you cannot wait to respond to life only based on your exposure and experience you will need that grace can we pray in one minute and cry to the God of heaven and say, Lord, I'm tired of foolish decisions. I access wisdom by the Spirit. The word of wisdom. My life is full of challenges that need to be surmounted. And Lord, I need a dimension of wisdom that is beyond my age. There are many of us in ministry, you, you have challenges financially, administratively, in terms of growth and membership. There are many of us here, you need grace. You don't know what to do. Should I get a job? Should I do business? You, you need the word of wisdom. You need the word of wisdom. A supply of intelligence that is above this realm. You need God to communicate something that bails you out. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Help me, oh God. Spirit of the living God, I open up to you. My destiny is at the mercy of your wisdom. Speak to me. Tired of piercing myself again and again with needless sorrows. When your wisdom can bail me out of the vicissitudes of life. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Please sit down. We have to run. Just help those under the anointing. In 2004, I spent three weeks praying this gift into my life. Three weeks. God is my witness. Praying it into my life. I said, Lord, you cannot send me as foolish as I am. And I am too young to make the decisions I should make. I need a supply of intelligence that is higher. Listen, some mistakes in life don't have second chance. Some answers, the Bible says to not be hasty. You can stand before your destiny helper and blow up your opportunity forever. That's why Jesus kept quiet. Because this is not a usual communication. You need the spirit to speak. How many people have stood before their supervisors? How many people have stood before their financial helpers? How many people have stood before their boss? He says, I will give you a mouthpiece and a wisdom that your enemies will not be able to gainsay or resist. Number two, the word of knowledge. What is it? The word of knowledge is a supernatural insight and access into past and present events with a view to preferring solutions with a view to preferring solutions access into happenings access into occurrences sometimes even occurrences that predate your own birth Our world is full of wickedness and we need this dimension of the Holy Spirit that can help us to go back in time and piece together useful informations 
that help us to interpret the happenings in our lives. Are we together now? Oftentimes the secret to the future is in the past. When we can sustain the eyes to go back and see and understand. Word of knowledge. The purpose of the gift of the word of knowledge primarily aside from supplying informations is to build the faith and the conviction of the recipients if i can reach into an information in your life and supply you an information that might be useful in helping you interpret your today it can build your faith now notice that the gift of the word of knowledge and prophecy works peri pursu. In fact, many people mistaking this gift, half of what people call prophecy is the manifestation of the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge only deals with past events and present events. When it becomes futuristic, that's prophecy. Past events, present events. Two examples very quickly. In John chapter 1, you read from verse 45 to the last verse 51. John chapter 1. The Bible tells us about a man called Nathaniel. Are we together? Nathaniel was beckoned by Philip that Jesus, they had met the Messiah that was prophesied. And Nathaniel made a very sarcastic statement. Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? While all that conversation was happening, Jesus was somewhere watching them. Then Nathaniel comes and Jesus sees Nathaniel. Here's what Jesus said. An Israelite indeed in whom there is guile. And Nathaniel saw him. I said, uh uh, you mean you know me? And he said, Nathaniel, while you were under the tree insulting me, I saw you. <gasps> Nathaniel was amazed. Immediately, an attestation this is the Christ, truly, the Son of the living God. And then he said, Nathaniel, just because I gave you this, you were stunned. You are going to see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending. Remember when Jesus was with the Samaritan woman at the well. That woman had the potential to bring a lot of people to hear and listen to Jesus. Preparing them for what would happen at redemption. But there needed to be an access point. The woman had to be convicted. And then Jesus came to her. And they started a conversation about water. And then Jesus looks at her. And says to her, Madam, you have five husbands past. The sixth one that you are with now is not your husband. And she looked, she said, I perceive you are a prophet. And then he began to talk to her. The Bible says she left her water pot there. Ran to the city and said, all of you come. Come and see a man. He didn't say come and see a preacher. Come and see a man that manifested a gift that astonished me. Come. Come see a man that has told me what I've done. And when the people came and listened to Jesus, here was their testimony. We now believe not because of what you have said. We have had that encounter by ourselves. The word of knowledge, if used in accordance to the word, is powerful. I have watched people's faith jump, leap, just because a communication, one word was given to them by the Spirit. Do you know, let me tell you this. Never fight the gifts of the Spirit. It may be abused, that's why we are balancing it. But do not ever fight it. The encouragement that happens to your faith when a true man of God gives you a genuine word of knowledge, not a general guesswork that you know this is not edifying. There are words of knowledge that are not blessing. Are we together? If I look at you and say you have pain all over your body, the probability is yes something must be paining you somewhere so that's not powerful enough to convict you but when i look at you and say pastor alpha while you were eating yam from home before coming and this and that and that and that and i talk to you ah something happens to your faith and all of a sudden you look and you are like my the God who can see me is the one who is telling me now by this time tomorrow you will be foolish to doubt him are we together now the word of knowledge listen listen let me have your attention the word of knowledge is a powerful instrument of building faith 
Have you gone to a place where you see people being sarcastic and nasty and lousy and insulting the cynical people? And then one really strong, accurate, powerful, well-delivered word of knowledge. And all of a sudden, you see everybody wipes sleep. And you say, lift up your hand and everybody is lifting and open. The unbelief in our world require the gifts of the Spirit to tame doubt and release the power of God to people. I remember betting with a woman the gender of her child and I told her she argued it was a female I said if it's a male you will make pepper soup for me if it's a female I don't know how to make pepper soup so I will give you the financial equipment I started dancing I said hey hey somebody is going to make pepper soup for me <laughs> what a free way of earning a living <laughs> Imagine what happens to your stubborn loved ones. You know, we have almost every family has, for whatever reason, we have people around us who the devil is trying to snatch. You pray in tongues, they shout, they talk nonsense. I want to go to the house of God. No, 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 no. no. And then one day, God just lands in a way and you commute, not, not for self-aggrandizement. You speak a powerful word to your father. And say, sir, the Lord told me to tell you while you were at the bank trying to collect that money, it was, remember that your argument with that woman, her name was Stella. Usually they will act as if you are lying. And then later they will call you and say, who told you? Let me tell you, the human spirit can never resist the supernatural. Our pride can claim it doesn't matter. It's a lie. It's a lie. If you, if you encounter the word of knowledge, whether you repent or not, you can't sleep that night, for sure. Ah, ah. He called my name and said this and said that. I think where it was in Joss, if you can remember, when Joss ministering um, some, I think one of the polytechnics, and then while I was ministering, the Holy Ghost ministered to me that there was a young man who was doubting, you know, you know, these are people, where, you know, doubting, doubting, how are we sure? Remember this story? And I said, there is a young man, now, this is what you are thinking to yourself. You are doubting, and this is what is wrong with you. God will heal you now. When that guy came out, even me, when you see him, you know it had to be God that brought him out. Guy just came out dragging and said, honestly, he was standing there doubting this thing, I was like magic. Brothers and sisters, our shout is too much let the gifts help us our 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 begging is too much let the god brought these gifts to make the gospel superior the the way we communicate this thing we are the mercy of people's wills we beg we beg you know everybody oh yeah lift your hand now is jesus not here my jesus and everybody's looking at you where is he and you are negotiating with them no the bible says that when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power even if you are a prophet if someone gives you a word of knowledge it will impress you you won't say because i'm walking it it's like you are it's like you are a nurse when you are sick won't you turn for injection will you say because i'm a nurse? no Another nurse will give you an injection and you will receive it so that you will be well. Listen, I want you to cry tonight and say, Lord, my family needs salvation. Let this gift of the Spirit work in my life. Pray one minute. There are doubters in my community insulting and blaspheming the name of the Lord. Oh, that you would grant me access, oh God. the word of knowledge supernatural illumination insight into events explaining the mysteries of the lives of men helping men make sense of their lives hallelujah please sit down number three discerning of spirits I can spend the whole night here but let's see how God will help us what's discernment or we call it discernment or discerning of spirits please do not joke with this gift this 
gift of the spirit will be um, it will bail you out of many pains are we together what is discerning of spirits the gift of perception perception the ability to perceive spiritual impulses the ability to know the origin the source and the motivation behind the manifestation the origin the source and even the motif behind the manifestation is called discernment whether activity is initiated and sustained by God whether it is an act of man's will or it is demonic you will never judge them by the physical results it will take discernment for you to know that which is of God brothers and sisters let me tell you and I submit to you with all humility it will be foolish to imagine everything happening in the body of Christ is of God no there are things that are orchestrated by demons there are doctrines that came from devils the Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons there is such a doctrine as the doctrine of demons not the study of demons an understanding that was fabricated intentionally from the pit of hell to destroy the saints are we together you need discernment it is only through discernment that you can judge righteous judgment it's impossible for you to judge accurately if you lack discernment you will call good evil you will call evil good you will call saints devils you will call devils saints it takes discernment The realm of the spirit is not heaven. The realm of the spirit is a spiritual environment. The environment that birthed this realm. The raw materials that have now crystallized as matter in this realm came from the realm of the spirit. And anyone who has access to the realm of the spirit has a superior advantage. Whether through divination, whether through the Holy Spirit or any other spirit. Any spirit that can access the realm of the spirit has an advantage over this realm. That's why Jesus said, I am the door. There are many other entrances. But he says, I'm the authorized entrance. Meaning you can enter the house through a window. You can enter the house through somewhere. If I enter your house, if you step into your house and you find me and I crawled my way through a gutter somewhere, am I inside your house? Yes. Did I enter legally? No. The authorized way is the gate and the door. I've told you every power you see being manifested on earth is God's power. Every plus the power manifested by witchcraft. Once have I spoken, twice have we heard that all the only reason why it is called witchcraft is because there is an agenda behind that result. And the whole spirit is not the spirit that authorized that possibility to find expression. So there is the correctness of the result does not mean it is of God. The correctness of the result is gauged by the spirit that sponsored it. Any activity in the realm of the spirit sponsored by the Holy Spirit has God's endorsement. That means that it is possible this guy can be sick. And as a herbalist, I can conjure leaves based on a book my grandfather taught me, correct? And he says when you put lemon and add it with guava drink pour charcoal on it set it on fire in the night it can raise a kind of incense that will bring health to him and my grandfather will say that's how we live healthy this guy can be sick i will conjure those things it will shock you right in your presence the way the guy will be healed he'll say i can't feel pain again he said that's it and he'll go and bring someone else 
Now, if I come as a man of God and I say, wow, we are brothers. We are not brothers. We are not brothers. We are not brothers. Are we together? No, we are not brothers. Brothers are those from the same father and mother or at least father. Correct? We can't be brothers. You see, because the spirit, one time I was ministering to a lady and they took her somewhere in Zaria here. And she, she described a very nasty experience that she had. She said when she went there, one of the things that happened to her was that they will burn, you will drop your money, not honorarium, there's an exact amount that you drop. Once you drop the man, you know, the whatever it is, will now call certain names, cajole, you know, read from books, slates, and all kinds of things. And the moment they say it, a spirit will tell that man um, whatever spirit influence. And then all of a sudden, you know how it happens when people manifest. The, the victim now will start shaking, shaking, and before you know it, the spirit will start speaking. Now, here's the interesting point. After all the conversation with the spirit, you will now ask Moya, why did you come? Maybe they annoyed me or I didn't eat. You know how spirits talk. They are so dull. I've not, I've not eaten. And you people are eating in this land. And we are here hungry. And then, instead of casting out the devils, because they cannot cast out the devils, they do what we call occultic pacifism. You pacify by an atonement. You see that? So you is the spirit that will tell you what it will eat. So the spirit will say one black goat. You say, Tom, that's it. You two, all of you had it. It's not me that wants to eat the goat. And then they bring the goat. And the only thing the man burns is the legs and the head. <laughs> oh, not burn that part. And settle down with the real part of the goat and say, look, he that serves in the altar should, should eat from the altar. And then when I looked at the lady in my mind, I said, what is, what is all this thing now? And you know, before I would talk, all of a sudden, that spirit just started manifesting. And I said, honestly, I don't have all this time. Please, I'm tired. Just live in the name of Jesus Christ. And that was the end of it. When the lady got up, her mother was surprised. And watch this. Because that, this thing, you will go for many days. It's not like you will go once. If you don't complete the, uh, the the program the demon gave it can backfire and kill everybody you know how it happens and all of that let me tell you all that is nonsense I repeat nonsense absolute nonsense no. there is a name oh, that was given to believers there is a name there is a name it says in my name it didn't say the mentioning of it you can shout Jesus till forever. And like the sons of Sceva, demons will pound on you like many people talk. It's not about pronunciation. There is a guy, there's one guy that committed a crime recently. His name is Jesus. I'm one, one of these funny guys. Now, not, a, not the footballer I was reading. I said, Jesus, can you imagine that guy? So you stand and shout. And while you are shouting, Jesus, Jesus, no. It is not in the pronunciation. It's in the revelation. The miracle is in your understanding. That's why Jesus looked at them and said, go. One of the standard proofs of spiritual maturity is discernment. You cannot say you are matured in the spirit if this gift is not working in your life. Brothers and sisters, I submit to you and... I join the many loving men of God around the world and together we take responsibility for not helping the body of Christ mature. We have produced miracles. We have produced signs and wonders. But the average believer is not mature at all. We do not understand the speakings of the spirit. We do not know how to interpret spiritual things. We are dull of hearing. No ears that hear, no eyes that see. But God is helping us in Jesus name. There are many other texts that talk about discernment. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14. Let me give it to you please. Just write very quickly. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14. The Bible says that strong meat is for those who are of full age. Who by reason of use have learned to exercise their senses to discern between good and evil. In Acts chapter 16 from verse 16 to 18 when you read Acts 16 from verse 16 to 18 Paul came into a city and there was a young lady the Bible called her a damsel he said that this lady had the spirit of divination 
and some business people saw her and saw the potentials in her and they negotiated she would give word of knowledge and prophecy and she would bring money and the bible says they made much gain with it and then one time she saw paul preaching and here's what she said that's why you need discernment these are the holy men of god they have come to show us the way of righteousness let me tell you what many of us will do say wow you mean how long have you been in ministry i never knew that i mean you are so generous you don't know me you're already talking about me so let's walk together can we walk come to my pulpit on sunday even if it's a saturday night listen please hallow your altar don't bring anybody just because you saw gifts let there be a system of vetting for the sake of the sheep are we together these are the men the first day paul kept quiet second the bible says she kept doing it one time paul looked and said wow prophesying word of knowledge and paul just switched in the realm of the spirit and saw a demon manipulating and said look hurry up let's we must make gate to them paul casted that demon you know they beat paul because of it the rest is history the people were angry because they knew that business was closed for them as soon as the lady was delivered she got up madam are you seeing nothing i'm not seeing anything again Lord give us discernment 1st Kings chapter 3 verse 16 to 28 1st Kings chapter 3 verse 16 to 28 we don't have the time but let me give you that story I wanted to use it as the text the classic text to explain discernment for you the Bible says that God gave Solomon an understanding heart and his first test was two harlots who came before him praise God the Bible says that those, all of them had, you know, they had a child each. And then the Bible says, whilst they were sleeping, one slept on her child. I don't know what kind of sleep that was. And suffocated the child to death. Then she got up in the middle of the night, shook her child and found out her child was dead and quietly replaced the child. The next day when they got up, there was, there was an issue. The woman wanted to breastfeed her child. And noticed that the child was dead but she looked well and said no this is not my child off they went to Solomon and when they got there the woman who swapped the child started you know they started advocating and said this and that and that and Solomon looked that was a serious situation now notice this is what I want to teach you notice how Solomon manifested discernment the first thing he did was he said bring the sword that's the word of God go and get me the sword this confusion requires the word of God that is able to cut asunder and divide between bone and marrow. That knife was a similitude of the sword of the spirit. Discernment is impossible if you do not understand the character of God. Not just the word of God. You must know what God can do and what he cannot do. The operation of any spirit must be consistent with the general operation of God. Such that even if you do not find a scripture for it, it still must be consistent verbatim. And so when they brought the sword, he said, bring the child. Bring the issue of contention. This is how we are going to discern. We are going to use the word of God to divide that issue. And immediately he lifted the sword. The sword was not for the child it was for their hearts the woman the woman whose child was like the bible says can a mother forget her suckling child I said no no please if it's issue of death now hand it over and the other woman was saying you see i'm right and solomon said i've gotten my answer madam give this woman her child go and bury your own child discernment let me tell you something in this our world somebody can steal a laptop and sell that laptop and wear a suit and swear and say me do i look like somebody who can steal a laptop you need discernment you can see somebody that looks like a thief truly looks like a thief scattered disorganized but he may be one of the most honest persons in your life is that true policemen need this our our because the number of people in prison today that are not supposed to be there it's only god that will help you can look at me now never believe that i'll steal a laptop what for 
But what if I have a spirit that makes me steal it? Are we together now? We have blamed innocent people. They carry money in your house and you come, no discernment. You call everybody. And a smart young chap who is the thief about to go for lectures. And one guy just comes out. He's, he may not be born again, but he doesn't steal. And you look at him and say, come. Are you going to just bring this money out now? Or they will arrest you. And he say, I'm not the one. You need discernment. If you do not have discernment, you are going to destroy your leadership because the world is full of deception. Are we together? Someone can be killing you and look at you and smile while you are dying, while they are piercing you. That's the person who said, don't promote this person. This person is not from this state. And you come and meet him and say, sir, my portion is stretching. Say, my son, ha, or you sit down. What did you discuss with them? And they went to visit this fool. But with discernment, as soon as you sit down, something in your spirit, you may not see a vision, but something refuses to agree. Something just says, uh uh. So, have you ever wanted to do something? Maybe you wanted to do business with somebody, or you wanted to do a discussion, or you were just saying, we are going to be partners, and you could not sleep in the night. Not fear, I'm not talking of fear. For, and everything, physically speaking, was correct. Have you ever made up your mind that you are going to ask a lady out? You prayed, you fasted, you were happy. On that day, after you talking and put your tie, your spirit, your, your peace ceased. Ah. He said, I mean, I look forward to this time. Let me tell you why many people land into trouble. We numb those things and continue and continue. You were about to travel, but the thing in your spirit, not fear. And you ignored it. Discernment is powerful. Discernment is powerful. But let me tell you something. No matter, most people train their discernment just by prayer. They never study the word. That's why they get into confusion. Are we together? If all you do is pray and pray and pray and pray, your eyes will be open to the realm of the spirit, but your capacity to interpret the impulses will be wrong. That's why you will give false visions. You will give false interpretations. You will see a nice lady. Come, darling. You will see a nice lady like this lady now. And you just sense something demonic in her. And because you do not have the word to understand, you just look and say, Kai, I stood near this lady and I had some, this lady must be a witch. No, sir, she's not a witch. You are not a good Bible student. You are a prayer warrior, but you do not understand the word. And you are using error to now change this lady and call her a witch. Are we together now? Let's be very careful. We have, we have destroyed people's lives. Pastors have used inaccurate discernment alongside other gifts to scatter marriages. Hello? We have called everybody witch. You just turn and you look at a lady like this. You say, why are you looking fine like this? You are a witch. No, you are not a witch. Pray for two of them and see who, who gets delivered. We must be careful. Discernment is needed in our day to day. Do you know, prophets cried in the Bible when things happened and they did not see it or, or perceive it. They said, Lord, why did you hide this from me? May God build us to a point where nothing passes above you without your spirit receiving the seed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Or some of us have those impulses, but we do not know how to interpret it and respond to it. You've been having an impulse like death is around the corner, but you didn't know what to do until somebody died and said, yeah, so this is what I've been feeling. Those impulses are not caused by demons. It is the Holy Spirit. Listen to my message, spiritual perception. The Holy Spirit is attempting to communicate to you. If you do not have the word of God, your dreams will be corrupted. Hello? Because dreams and visions are also an extension of discernment. Am I blessing you? One of the most deceptive tools that Satan is using now, I think in the last four or five years, has been aberrated dreams and visions. God would make your destiny, the devil would try to use the face of your destiny helper to chase you in a dream. You stand up and bind him for two hours. Reject him in the physical. 
and remain poor and broke forever. We have to be careful. Satan has made families fight today by using the faces of mothers and fathers and you just say, I saw my mother with a knife. I say, I don't care. She will die. Be careful. Be careful. Listen, our only basis for escaping error is the word of God. Please, you have to believe what I'm saying. The study of scripture is important. It gives us an insight into how God works so we can judge from that lens. There are many dreams when you get up, you are just supposed to say nonsense. Blast in tongues for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, and that ends it. But some of us document everything. Plus, wicked dreams from the pit of hell, we document it. And then when you are mentoring somebody one day, you say, these are my cup dreams, read it. And then the guy reads it and says, wow, strange creatures. I said, it's the realm of the spirit, just keep reading. You see, let me tell you, don't laugh. I'm saying this because there are people now who are not even sure of anything again. Is that true? Satan can manipulate dreams. One brother can have a dream and see ten sisters. He saw one. When he was praying about her, he saw another. You, you see confusion? I'm not saying he's a bad brother. But now you've seen ten ladies. You are now confused. So even if somebody comes to prophesy and say, it's, it's um, sister seven that you saw, number seven. You say, what of two? I first saw one before seven and confusion. What of people who marry and have dreams and see someone who is not their husband and get up and say, that means I made a mistake. I knew it. I knew that this, look, you are married, you are married. There is grace to live. There is grace to work it out. It is this lack of thing that can make a man who has been with a woman for 20 years. She gave you children. All of a sudden, you made money. And then you go and meet. And, and it's usually us, prophets and apostles. You come and meet us and then we just conjure all kinds of stories. The man goes back home and drives the wife. Say discernment. Say it again, discernment. You need discernment. You need discernment to know who to help. Someone comes to lie down in your room all through that night. Strange occurrences happen. It's, it's not a devil, but he needs help. Are we together? People bring atmospheres. Discernment helps you to pick the impulses of people. Sometimes as I minister to people, that's how I know they're they are in trouble. They may come out for something else, but as I stand, there are all kinds of things happening and I know that something is wrong. Something is wrong. When you train yourself, you can discern the presence of angels. You will not see them, but you can describe them. It's a mystery. You will know, not just that they are angels, but what kind of angels and their operation. You can know their direction. Are you see if now you see let me tell you if your spirit is not trained to understand this you will always think that the people who are saying it are lying and there are people who are lying are we together but you can discern it you can know you can train yourself in a room by the time you are worshiping and the shekinah of god comes not just by your shaking you know i'm not alone this is zion now this room has changed you, that's how you discern anointings as a man of God and you don't use anointing like a general purpose machine gun you won't be effective in ministry like that because you will be ministering an area you sense the anointing but you could not discern what kind of anointing and to what degree so we can be ministering here now and all of a sudden the healing anointing now begins to come if you do not have that discernment you can be saying something else and you see the anointing just like the Holy Spirit is very sensitive. When the anointing comes into a place and it's not acknowledged and channeled by faith for operation, it will be unfruitful, as powerful as it is. Nothing works without faith, even the anointing. Everyone say discernment. Think of how many things that have happened in our lives because we lack discernment. We need to cry for discernment we need to cry for discernment can we pray in one minute say lord discernment grant discernment 
to discern good and evil to discern opportunities to discern helpers to discern enemies to discern doors to discern manipulations of demons over my life hallelujah hallelujah you need discernment I think he was in Koinonia here one time after a very hot miracle service the very next day some guys called a lady they called the lady and said she won uh, I, I, I don't I can't remember the amount but a very huge amount you know let's assume maybe one million or five million and told her you won it make sure you don't tell anybody quietly find your way to the front of I, I think it was um, maybe first bank or somewhere like that and they met that lady there the rest is history the next thing that lady found herself in Kaduna in a building one of our ladies she's no longer here found herself in Kaduna they took her somewhere in your Kaduna one place that looks like a warehouse it was as if her eyes I don't know how to you you get what I'm saying as if you are you are you are awake but it's as if they did something to your eyes and all of a sudden her it's like her eyes she came back to herself and she called me I said where are you and she said I'm so 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 please I said hey, can you walk out and see a bike there I said take a bike immediately straight I told her take a bike straight to Kao no matter how much just arrive there first I was waiting for that lady until she arrived in and I said what happened to you she said honestly she doesn't know I remember one thief that Pastor Jakes caught in the, I think Pastor Jakes was going to Sabo or something and then the guy was you know some of them use charm abracadabra they sit down and they do something they, they don't put their hand there they can just hang it around and your money follows them from today that devil that comes near you the, the fire and the discernment you will, you will know and you will hold the hand and tell him look not everybody is a normal human being there are people who are men plus possibilities. Men plus possibilities. Hallelujah. Can we touch on one more gift? Let's touch on diverse kinds of tongues. Hmm. How many have I done? One, two, three. Let's do four. We can continue next week because there's something i want to talk about that is hot in my spirit i was preparing it well i was let's just talk about tongues the bible tells us that there are diverse kinds of tongues everybody say diverse kinds of tongues when the bible says diverse that means that there are different kinds of tongues probably i think one of the greatest conflicts between and thank god for great men of god like Reverend Tende who wrote a book I think it was a book particularly tailor made to the northern church to help most every Christian pray in tongues wonderful text you can get it and read it it was an attempt to give a, a very solid 21st century biblical foundation because probably one of the greatest points of conflict between the Pentecostal charismatic and the orthodox is this dividing line of this subject of tongues is that true many of us come from backgrounds and families where people have different kinds of responses some of us even as we are now probably we are still there's an internal war over the issue of tongues the bible talks of diverse kinds of tongues and in first corinthians 13 paul gives us a little he opened it more to us he says though i speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels tongues of men refer to any earthly language the language understood by men used by inhabitants upon the earth the tongues of angels refer to supernatural communications not just languages used by angels angelios messengers any being that hails from the realm of the spirit communicating a language that is not known to men is called the tongues of angel it was an ancient way of communicating spiritual things the bible and theologically speaking identifies 
broadly speaking three kinds of tongues number one is what we call tongues for personal edification and growth you may want to write it down maybe you will help somebody with it tongues for personal edification and growth first corinthians 14 and verse 2 the bible speaks there he says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to god not unto men but to god so there is tongues that is for personal edification and growth there's tongues that the bible says that is a sign to unbelievers are we together as was the case in acts chapter 2 when you read from verse 4 to 12 the day of pentecost the bible says that the people were filled with the holy ghost and began to speak in tongues and among the many variations of tongues they were communicating earthly languages are we together and most of the people came and heard them let's go to verse 6 just give us verse 6 and let's let's look at what it says and when the sound of God the multitudes came together and they were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language can you imagine almost every language there was represented someone was communicating it now the communicators did not even know what language they were speaking but the listeners they were not just speaking a language in the spirit and interpreting it they were communicating a language they never learned hallelujah a sign to unbelievers history is full of people who have done that it happened to kenneth e hagin it happened to rw shambach of blessed memories people who would go to certain lands to preach and there would be no interpreter and the power of god would fall on them and they would preach in chinese fluently for that period of time afterwards everything goes down so there is tongues as a sign to unbelievers then number three there is tongues as a ministry gift tongues as a ministry gift for the edification of the body tongues as a ministry gift for the edification of the body first corinthians chapter 14 when you read from verse 4 and 5 5 particularly the bible talks to us about that tongues very important it says i wish you all spoke with tongues but even more that you should prophesy it says for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues unless that means this is the condition for them to become equal we are coming there that the one prophesies is greater than the one who manifests these kinds of tongues unless that means the moment there is an interpreter what he's speaking and the interpretation will equal prophecy are we together now yes now let me show you where the confusion is before we talk about diverse kinds of tongues give us verse 29 and 30 this is where many people have erroneously carved out a basis for confusion 12 29 corinthians first corinthians 12 12 29 and 30 are all apostles what's the answer no are all prophets no are all teachers no are all workers of miracles no watch this now do all have gifts of healing no here's where many of our dear wonderful men and women of god who are well-meaning love the lord but have inaccurate understanding of the word of god this is where the confusion has come it says to all speak with tongues now look at what context of tongues the next verse to all interpret so he's talking about tongues as a ministry gift not tongues as for your personal edification are we together now not everybody will manifest the gift of diverse kinds of tongues what is it really the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is a supernatural communication listen prophecy in an unknown, unknown an unknown language be it heavenly or earthly prophecy in an unknown language you are communicating a word from the lord to the people of god but it is in a language that is not known by you the speaker and most most often than not by the listeners when you communicate a word from the lord that is supposed to edify the people 
Are we together now? But it's just that it came in a language that is not known by you, the speaker, nor the listeners. There must be, the Spirit of God must move upon you, the speaker, or another person, to break down that spiritual message you brought, so that the listeners can hear and apply their faith to it and receive. So when I begin to say everybody pray in tongues, there are a number of people who have problem with it and say, no, it's not in the Bible. It, it was there in the day of Pentecost. The church in Corinth were manifesting it. In fact, let me tell you this. Paul himself made a very profound statement. And he said, I thank my God I pray in tongues more than ye all. When you read 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18, and then you read verse 39. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18 and then verse 39 he says i thank my god i speak with tongues more than you all paul is saying look 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 i pray in tongues more than ye all not just that i i interpret all of this see that it is important please listen to me if you are here seated maybe you are just coming today inside or outside and you have shortchanged yourself because you have probably been sincerely but wrongly indoctrinated that praying in tongues is a gift that is for a few people. The person who communicated that is not in error. He was only incomplete. Is that true? What kind of tongues? If he means the gift of diverse kinds of tongues, he's correct. It's not for everybody. The Bible says that. And where that gift is manifested, it is only beneficial to the body if there is an interpreter. The individual who communicated it or another person. But the Bible says the tongues for edification does not need interpretation because not speaking to men, we are speaking to God. 14 verse 2. See that? Are we together now? Have you gotten that clearly? So this is very, very important. You are here and you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. I can begin to give you a rundown of several things you are missing. When the ministry was a lot smaller, I used to do that by myself. Then Pastor Jake's came join a Jimmy too used to join and now the ministry is, is so large we've handed everything to the prayer department and boy are they doing a great job if you are here you are not filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of praying in tongues I want you to know that Tuesday is a wonderful opportunity for you come whether or not is their their baptism you know a prayer you just come and make sure that they can minister to you hallelujah let me stop here and talk on words we will take from interpretation of tongues and, and the rest because next week, please don't mix next week. It will be a very great impartation. The Lord instructed me to activate these gifts. But I want to talk on words. The Holy Spirit, while I was getting ready to go and take my bath, I was just, you know, praying a little. And then the Holy Spirit began to minister to me. The anointing of the Spirit just came strong upon me. And the Lord told me that I should speak to people about words. Write this down. Words are God's instrument of creation. Words. Next week when I teach you, the, I, we finish the vocal gifts and the power gifts, we'll talk some more. But it's important for you to know. Words are God's instrument of creation. And one classic proof of spiritual growth and maturity is the ability to speak consistent with the word of God. Listen carefully. The ability for your communications and your speakings to always without fail be in line with the word of God. Now sometimes in an attempt to press into deeper dimensions of God, listen carefully and I must admit this to you. You know sometimes as we press towards superior dimensions in the spirit which is valuable, we tend to trivialize some of these foundational truths and look at them as though they are basic, they are for children. At every level of your work with God, your words will be the programmers of your destiny. Write it down. Your words are the programmers of your destiny. You don't talk anyhow, speak antichrist. You must culture your words by the word of God. You must ensure that your communication is building your life and your destiny. Many of us have destroyed our lives because we have allowed our words. Let me show you a few scriptures that will really challenge you. Can I give you some verses about words? 
that have really really blessed me i try to write the five or six most powerful scriptures i have found about words and i will give it to you ready media please help us if we can project them they will be great um we need some speed here so that we can pray number one john 6 63 john 6 63 the words that I speak unto you, Jesus is speaking. He says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. Listen, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are not just sounds that enter your ears. They are spirit and life. So while you are saying it is not for people like us, we are the nobodies. You are sending spirits. You are sending instruments of creation. You are sending messengers into your future, programming woe, programming tragedies for you. Words are powerful. God created the universe through words. The only thing God did not create through words is man. And he said it, it's just that he added with his hand again. Every other thing God said, God saw. God said, God saw. Number two, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. And then we'll go to Matthew 12, 37. Let me give us a verse ahead. Media, please give us quickly. Ecclesiastes 8, verse 4, and then Matthew 12, 37. It says, where the word of a king is, these are the scriptures that have blessed me and shaped my understanding of the power of the spoken word. Where the word of a king is, there is what? Power. Except you are not a king, but if you are a king, and the Bible says 5 verse 10 of Revelations, don't go there, just write it. It says that we have been made unto our God, kings and priests, a kingdom of priests, and we shall reign. How do we reign? Remember, I've taught you, dominion mandate. One of the ways that we legislate is through the power, the, our legislature through words. For where the word of Joshua Selman is, there is power. Where the word of anybody in Koinonia who has an understanding. That means if I see things happening in my life and I don't like, what is the first thing to do? Please talk to me. What is the first thing to do? Listen, listen. Don't let anybody make you feel these things are basic. No, you didn't create the realm of the spirit. You came from there. Anybody that is born and says, I will not eat food the regular way. I want to live my own way. Except you have caught the revelation of being a breatharian. Just know that you are going to die and die. You will die and you will shrink and die like Somalian children. The authorized way is that you continue to eat. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified like a court of law. There is a spiritual court, right? The realm of the spirit works on a legal basis. He said, for by thy word, as easy as salvation is, it takes words to impart the life of Christ to you. The word is near thee, even in thy heart and in thy mouth, the word of faith that we preach, right? Romans 10 verse 8 to 10. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So when you are condemned, who condemned you? It's not really the, your neighbor. No. No. You only attracted to your life what your words made. I refuse to speak negative about myself. I refuse it. You will never hear me say anything sarcastic about myself. I love myself. Uh, I think it was school of ministry students I was teaching and I was telling them that these people that hang themselves, it has been a wonder for me for many years. Even if I were not born again, I won't hang myself. No. I love myself passionately. Hang myself? No. I may quarrel myself. I may challenge my body to hang, to go and stand on a rope and just tie myself? No. By your words, you are justified. By your words, you are condemned. Isaiah 43 verse 26 then we go to Numbers 14 28 and then just two more and we're done I just felt like speaking to us about words by the Spirit of God because many believers are becoming careless we speak anyhow and we don't mind and we keep programming things that destroy us and then we say it doesn't matter it does matter brothers and sisters 
everybody who worries, everybody who strives for mastery must do so lawfully. We don't invent the rules. We find them out. It's an ancient path and we walk in it. Isaiah 43 and verse 26. He says the B part. He said, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. How do you justify yourself? So how does the sick justify himself? I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Yes, there might be pains, but I decree and declare by his stripes I am healed. Now, when you are saying this, you see a lot of emojis look at you and say you are still a baby Christian. Until one day as matured as you think you are, the devil is not a fool. He will just allow pride to reach the highest point and sweep you one day in a way that you won't believe. I speak over my life. I speak over Koinonia. Koinonia is planted. Bible says, they that be planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, he said they shall be fat and flourishing. Many of us used to do it before. But now that we are becoming men of God, we are throwing it away. Get back. It is the childlike principle that has lifted ordinary people to become mighty. If I tell you I don't speak the word, I'll be lying. I speak the word. Shabakatulia. Joshua Selman, you are blessed. You are blessed. I have a little blackboard with scriptures. I recite those scriptures when I'm praying. And God did extraordinary things through the hands of Joshua Selman. So that handkerchiefs and aprons. You don't wait till you see the result. It is the words that command the results. In the name of Jesus I declare wealth and riches are in my house. Durable riches. I decree and declare I shall not die. I'm exempted from the arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. People like Pastor Chris who say, keep, how, how does he say it? I, 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 keep, keep, thank you. Keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Do it, oh. Do it like that. That's how it works. Believe me, that's how it works. You don't speak once and keep quiet. Listen, if I speak and I say in the name of Jesus, any spirit oppressing anybody and people are outside there, why can I not speak and say in the name of Jesus, everywhere my destiny helper is? By the favor of God, come. That you saw it in the Bible is no guarantee that it will happen in your life. You must speak. Speaking is so important to the point that they had to shut the mouth of Zechariah so that he would not speak nonsense. If he had spoken, he would have altered John the Baptist's destiny. Numbers 14, 28. Very interesting scripture. I found this scripture during a retreat. Numbers 14, 28. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, not as you desire quietly, as you have spoken in my ears. Question, where was the ears when you were speaking? Did the ears come near your mouth? So while you were blasting and saying in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, I decree and declare, oh grave, where is your sting? Oh death, where is this and that? And you are prophesying and you are speaking and you are saying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have a job. The Lord grants me favor. I may not have an uncle, I may not have an auntie, but in the name of Jesus, God raise helpers. The Bible says God is bringing his ears down and is hearing. He says, as I, you have spoken in my ears, so will I do not to your neighbor, to you, to you, to you. Isaiah 44 verse 26 Isaiah 44 verse 26 Isaiah 44 verse 26 Talking about the Lord It says he that confirmed the word of his servant Confirm Meaning you speak and go Let me tell you something And perform the counsel of his messengers I want to teach you something about faith. Look up. Get any of my teachings on faith. Let me teach you something about faith. You see, Pastor come. Satan has lived very long in this realm. Believers, hear me. Let me speak to you. Satan has lived very long in this realm. And he understands that man, out of the assistance of the spirit, has one limitation. It's called our humanity. 
and part of the components of our humanity is that we can be wary is that true remember the bible says the keeper of israel you know doesn't sleep doesn't slumber but men sleep and they can slumber are we together so this is what he does satan knows that your eyes your optical eyes your ears all of these things control your perceptions hence your convictions and so what he does is he he makes sure that perpetually before you is an awareness of your limitation are you hearing what i'm saying now listen to me so while you are praying in the middle of hot prayer the devil just comes in and says where's the husband and you would think it will enter you because you are in the spirit it will just enter you and you say oh god am i not a beautiful lady what is all this you see he has brought you back to his realm the bible says to walk in the spirit let me tell you what to do when that happens that's a sign that you, a reaction is happening in the spirit every time you make such a proposition please help that lady that is a sign that something is happening in the realm of the spirit are we together i remember the time when god showed me the vision of koinonia we're about to start i saw overflows remember i i said i saw people coming from other cities other places that was what i saw as at that time they had not even expanded cgc i remember when i was praying and i was going to go and announce it well i was praying 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 there came that voice of doubt again don't think it doesn't happen to me no most people will lie to you and say it doesn't happen it's a lie it happens to everybody are you hearing what i'm saying that while you are praying and the devil says you now want to disgrace yourself and God, you have not even gotten a venue they have not given you anything just because god showed you cgc you now want to make a stupid statement but the bible says the spirit of faith has a character it speaks it doesn't wish and hide no 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 it speaks kabakoto sakatayada the spirit of faith it speaks speaks oh let me let me play it safe when it, when the answer comes so that i won't be embarrassed question whoever takes the glory should take the shame every time you speak you put pressure on god's integrity lord i take your word and i shout it let them hear so that if it does not happen they, no 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 i can't give you the glory and take the shame many of us here we have been threatened by our physical circumstances into silence let the redeemed of the lord not whistle say so say so i say it all the time i stand before my mirror joshua selman you are anointed you are rising from glory to glory superior dimensions of the anointing the favor of god is upon you sometimes i'm listening to koinonia message and while apostle is prophesying i'm there in my house kneeling down and listening because they are two different people i tell you and i listen i listen to apostle's message i listen to his message more than many of you here i can sit down and claim because i'm the one ministry and never be blessed from it there is no koinonia message i've not listened to not for clarity and administration god is my witness i stand before him in your presence lift up your hands and i'm on my knees sometimes i play miracle service messages all while i sleep and i have strange encounters don't think this thing we're just faking it you don't walk this thing it will never work god is not a herbalist are we together sometimes i carry maybe benny him message or something i'm playing and in the sleep it continues mysterious encounters when you wake up the devil will say pastor alpha you have been prophesying for two weeks you to reason and you say no sir this is what many of us do god but it's true now see if you if you don't stop getting embarrassed by the absence of your result you will never walk by faith are you hearing what i'm saying this shame shame believers hear me I'm speaking to you by the spirit this shame consciousness of looking like a fool while awaiting your manifestation every miracle you see will risk taken by faith 
Lord, I thank you. Nations are coming. This ministry is rising. Oh, you are talking too much. Thank God I'm not talking to you. Lord, you who I'm talking to, you know me. I, come on, please. Don't go and shout in somebody's house. It's not your house. That's why the Bible says, close your door. Enter your room. Close your door. Talk to your father. There may not be money now, but in the name of Jesus, Father, I'm a tither. I'm a giver. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy. Jakatabata. And while you are speaking, the Holy Ghost just says, dance for one hour. Aha. Aha. The word has come. And you put one hot Igbo high praise. Hot high praise. You may not know how to sing well. She can sing for you. You know those, those, those wonderful Igbo sisters. And you are dancing. Apostle, I can't dance. Dance anyhow. It's an instruction. You dance like David danced. And while you are dancing, all of a sudden, in that foolishness of faith, the God I serve, who takes the weak things, the foolish things, is working a miracle. You see, let me tell you this. Spiritual people must be childlike, not childish, childlike. We are too matured for results. All this big manism in the presence of God. No, sir. Are we together? Yes. You must speak. You get up and you have a bad dream. You are lying down and one spirit comes to sleep with you and oppress you and you get up and you say kai this thing has happened again no sir in the name of jesus i decree and declare that i've been raised with christ and the devil says didn't the spirit know while you're there just keep it keep at it satan is a coward when he looks at let me tell you something when you are bold enough you will resist him and i promise you he will flee Is God speaking to us? We have been wasting words. The words that are supposed to be used for edification, we use that energy for gossip, for backbiting, for speaking words of unbelief. Pastor Alpha, that, that, that prayer we prayed that time. Shemi, you prayed it too. Let's be honest. Uh, not that I'm saying there's no faith to it. That's not what I'm saying, but is it really working? Just don't, you don't need to let nobody know. Just whisper it to me. That's unbelief. That thing you did is unbelief. Because you are trying to play games with God. Look, if you are in this thing, enter it and stay there and die in it. If you are not in it, then don't fake it. I'm a talking spirit. Truly I talk. Not talkativeness. Reduce half of the time we use jumping around and talking stories and talking nonsense go back to the secret place Kalabotas Kaliadash. this family is a family of peace this is my husband this is my wife we love ourselves no demon from anywhere is coming to scatter us you call your child daddy thinks you carry him say no 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 i'm a priest now this is not daddy bring your head let him just be playing around the head or cry leave, leave him there don't feel sorry for him pray you get up and walk around your house. Dr. Paul Enenche was saying something. They are, the Lord's garden that they are building now. He says almost every day he goes there to speak and build. Just the zinking of it, the, the roofing of that place is six million dollars. Six million dollars to face 70,000 capacity seater. It's not just ritual. He will go there quietly in the night at his level and status. Shakatabada. Lord, you have given the instruction. Let those who will publish it come. The Lord gave the word. I pray over Koinonia. Lord, thank you. Financial help us. Don't just say favor is happening automatically. No. Lord, there are men and women who will bless me every service. I pray that prayer. I'll be honest with you. Lord, I am serving you in truth. And the Bible says, he that ministers to you in carnal things. Lord, I expect favor. I am a receiver with thanksgiving. I receive grace. You have a troublesome tenant. Someone who is disturbing you and making life easy. Instead of fighting physically, I've taught you spiritual intelligence. Shakatabata. Lord, this woman is making life uncomfortable for my children. In the name of Jesus, I make decree. I'm a man of peace. I declare my borders are peaceful. 
even God who quickened the dead and collects, magnetizes, attracts things that be not as though they were. This is not positive confession. This is creation. 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 Are we together? You must know the Holy Spirit. Especially if you are in ministry. Listen. I have learned by the grace of God and by experience that the absence of certain things can never be replaced by certain others. Oratory will never replace the absence of the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Going to school and reading well will never replace the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Kneeling down and asking people to give you impartation will never replace a personal press for an encounter and a knowledge with the Holy Spirit. Miracle signs and wonders will never replace him. You can fake power. You can't fake his presence. Are we together? You must press to know the Holy Spirit. I study God's generals and every time I have an opportunity to look at materials that make reference to them, one thing was common between them regardless of their limitations and their temperaments they really knew him and their knowledge of the spirit brought accuracy in their lives they did mighty things that we are blessed you must know the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a personality to be known by men of god and miracle workers no the Holy Spirit is not a personality that should be known by apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. No. The Holy Spirit is the key to living. And when he, the spirit of truth, is come, the Bible says he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Can you pray one minute and say, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever serve you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow. Lord, I will seek you in the morning. I will learn to walk in your way. For step, step by, by step, step you lead me, and I will follow you all of the way. That's where we are bankrupt, no direction. We guess our lives and do everything, and your lifetime is too small for error. Your lifetime is too small for repeated mistakes. There must be a system in God for accuracy, in ministry, in family life your vocation whatever it is you cannot live your life just based on science there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but there is a personality for step by step you lead me i admit i'm ignorant but step by step you lead me and i will follow that's my part i won't be too ignorant i won't be too arrogant when he leads me i follow may be a stupid instruction but i'm too young to question him he's the spirit of the father i trust him you trusted a lecturer who is less than 20 years older than you you trusted a man who called himself your father not more than 30 years older than you and here comes one who was in the beginning the first personality of the trinity revealed and he comes to hold your hands and he said look i took a very frail man called moses and i guided him 
brothers and sisters this thing is not just skill and talent alone is the foolishness of submission to a personality not a power not just an influence a person some of us have foolishly followed him for years with stupid instructions admitting our ignorance in the the midst of a proud world oh god you are my god just the same and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you i will seek you in the morning i will seek you in the morning and i will learn to walk in your ways for step by step you lead me and i will follow all of my days from tonight step by step you lead you and i will follow you all of my days the holy spirit was with was with god when they were discussing your destiny it's a foolish thing to not need him in building it no if i was responsible for designing a curriculum and you ignore me when it comes to execution it is called pride I was in my mother's womb when he designed me I called you I ordained you so you walk with me and say Holy Spirit I don't know my way I don't know my way many people claim is their power and their might many people claim I understand church planting many people claim I know how to be a man of God but can you humble yourself and press for the knowledge of him the knowledge of the Holy Spirit will require time and it will require submission. One thing I know about the Holy Ghost is he hates arrogance. The Holy Spirit hates arrogance. When he comes to you, you are not colleagues. He's not in you as a tenant. He's in you as the landlord. What will happen tonight, brothers and sisters, is credited to him. It is him that reveals Jesus here. Look how many of us have wasted time. Listen to me, I'm speaking to you. There are many of us seated here. You would have been walking in your destiny already five years from now. But this stubbornness of, of not listening to him. Oh, holy, I, 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 all these church things. No. He told you go and serve in church. By now, certain things in your life would have gone. Ah. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. That's what I've done with my life. That's what we've done with Koinonia. Fill this temple with your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait. Lord, we wait up my destiny you are the only one who can open up my destiny take it high Mike let me tell you look at me at whatever level you are just walk with him you may have no iota of unction right now. Forget about anointing. Be foolish enough to hold him 
let him lead you let others go just walk with him you may be behind but brothers and sisters there is an unction he will put something upon your life that will shake the nations and take away the boastings of men God is never too slow with men never too slow if he's the one that kept you know you are faster faster than anything you can imagine faster there are many arrogant pastors claiming that they want to do ministry but they ignore him they like human connection but they leave him alone i will never forget years ago the spirit of god will keep me and said son never try to rush anything just walk with me just walk with me like he's telling someone now don't rush your life i know you think everybody has gone ahead of you don't rush that marriage don't rush that thing walk with him one day with him will cover 10 years of mistakes walk with him apostle i have no job just walk with him just walk with him if you were working five years ago all your salary put together would not be more than six million walk with him Aish. the holy spirit fortunately from next week i'm starting a series the lord has allowed me to take a series we're taking a series on the holy spirit a complete i will share with you very deep things that i've not shared with many people the holy spirit you ignore him as a businessman because you believe you are intelligent i went to harvard you ignore him as a father because you think i'm not a small child Hi. will i ever be able to leave him i know you are looking at me it's because i'm the i'm the part of the deal that is visible but behind me I'm not too smart to produce the results that you see. I'm not ashamed of it. Oh. There is one who is mighty. Mighty. There is an infinite wisdom behind everything you see. If it is the Lord's doing, remember, then it must be marvelous. If it's a man's doing, then it is natural, scientific. But the moment it becomes marvelous, it is the Lord's doing. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. Hey. You are marvelous, yeah. Marvelous, yeah. Marvelous, yeah. Marvelous, yeah. Marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. value is defined by scarcity when you study developmental economics value is defined by what scarcity the ability of a thing to not be available everywhere the most scarce thing is whatever cannot be found on earth that's what he gives you as your reward anointing is not something you get just by fasting anointing is God's reward for trusting him for working with me I give you something that money cannot buy for walking with me I give you something that builds you out of shame and inferiority I know you came from a background where nobody knew you and you were foolish enough to walk with me then I give you an unction they may criticize you but you don't deny proofs brothers and sisters no sir I'm trusting that God will make someone's life marvelous. The key, listen, the key is not running around. The key is staying. Martha, you are worried and offended about many things. But one thing is needful. Oh God, I should have had five children now. Don't you know he can give you one child that is like a nation? Oh God, I've been crying about that job. When we talk about intimacy with God, many busy people think it's a waste of time no 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 look i teach us some no no 
if I followed that route I would have been a failure today a big failure not ashamed you are the power in me you are the fire at work in me you are my ever present helper Holy Spirit ah. how do you stand and look at someone with a growth and take away that growth just like that how do you look at someone who is dead and bring the person back to life there are people here now with situations that doctors have ridden you off even a charm cannot solve it you need a commodity that is not available in the earth i told you the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference in a few minutes from now 10 years problems will just leave just like that no 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 that's what happens when you value him that's what happens that's what happens listen when you honor a man of god you don't just honor a body you honor the sacrifice the sacrifice of alignment that has caused that man to be able to hold certain dimensions of possibility listen to me all men are not equal no sir it's, it's a very harsh statement but it's the truth we are equal in Christ but our sacrifices and the election of grace are separated men to cadres based on the possibilities they can host ignoring that reality will be to the doom of a man the Holy Spirit we are going to begin to pray but I, I, I just four things the Holy Spirit you don't know him you are in trouble you will be faced by too many things that your age cannot solve you didn't study everything you had a degree in an area having a degree in engineering or in medicine is not having a degree in wisdom no sir that information is too small to define the quality of your life ministry you need him you want to succeed in life you don't just need information you need a person hallelujah holy spirit it's grace and glory i trust that god will initiate people into that dimension of grace of intimacy with the holy spirit hallelujah yes the Holy Spirit is speaking to me and he's saying there are seven people here right now that he wants to call like a call into intimacy seven people seven people seven people seven people Call your people, oh God. It's an initiation into a dimension of intimacy. The sister outside, for he will be real to you. Real to you by his spirit. This is not an issue of jamboree. It's not an issue of feeling anointed. It's walking with a person. It will make your life a wonder. A wonder. A wonder. He will make your life a wonder. He will not just give you anointing. He will walk with you. Walk with you. So you become an effulgence of that grace. Then you can say that which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have heard. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving me your Son and living your 
your spirit your work in my life is done I thank you oh my father for giving me your son and leading your spirit your word on earth please sit down if you can the third thing that you must know is you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom please I want you to be very sensitive we'll soon arise to pray sensitive ah, I just saw something jumping out of a lady jumping out of a lady let it be the end of it let it be the end of it let it be the end of it Forever faithful towards me will always provide for me. Praise your mercy towards me. Praise your way. allow the Holy Spirit flow something is happening now the Lord is showing me a map you know this happens and I'm seeing Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna right now the anointing is touching Southern Kaduna people Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit you're from that place an unction an unction I see a map in the spirit, Southern Kaduna. Let the hand of God step into that dimension. It's not a miracle, it's a sign and wonder. It's a demonstration of a dimension of the spirit. Everyone from Southern Kaduna comes under the influence of this grace. Southern Kaduna. Shabrakatos kelabrande katai. Lekatekos sotopadia. Lift them, O oh God. I hear my spirit lifting. Lifting. Lifting, he's raising you, raising you by his spirit, raising you. There is an unction that makes this possible, raising you by his spirit. I hope I'll be able to finish this. The mysteries of the kingdom that's the third thing that you must seek to know not just the word of God not just Rema the mysteries there is a lady in overflow three one is here two is the one by the road three is the one by the empty land there is a lady overflow three the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon her please I want I want her to come overflow three I'm seeing like an arrow right from this building right down there please sit down let's hurry up so that we can do a quick walk there are so many people you must access the mysteries of the kingdom everybody say mysteries a mystery is a secret code of operation the kingdom of god operates based on systems and you see these mysteries contained in them the revelations of God 
the revelations of God alongside the dimensions of his power. I've taught us here that there are two dimensions of God's power. The first dimension of God's power is enshrined in mysteries and principles. The second dimension of God's power is enshrined in a relationship. Two dimensions of God's power. So you don't have to be born again to experience the first dimension. The moment a principle is consistent with the character of God, it will release a dimension of the power of God like tithing, like sowing and reaping, like being responsible, like mentorship. All of these are principles in the kingdom that are backed up by God's own character. You must access the principles of the kingdom. Therein lies the key to your dominion. It is a terrible thing to be in the face of life and not know what to do. You must know what to engage for the outcomes you desire. Can you tell me you understand the mystery that governs restoration? You know restoration is a possibility in the kingdom. But what is the code of operation that is responsible for releasing that dimension of possibility? Because the Bible lets us know that both the years and even substances that a man loses can come back. But do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make that possible? Are we together? Do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make a sick person healthy? Yes, you know that divine healing is a possibility. But what controls it? Laying on of hands? No! No! Laying on of hands is just a channel. The inner workings is the spiritual understanding that backs that. Are we together now? You have to understand. The power of God is released through light. Remember the scripture Habakkuk. There was the hiding place of his power. Are we together? When you understand that, you don't have to lay hands on men to heal them. It doesn't even have to be a miracle service. The very understanding you have will respond to a man's need. The same way if I stand with you and I have, say, tuberculosis, you're a doctor. Doctor, if I have tuberculosis and you stand near me, must I believe in you to receive it? No, listen to me carefully. Are we together now? I'm standing close to you. It vetoes whether I agree with you. I can even be insulting you. But that's none of the business of the tuberculosis. Once there is proximity, it will enter you. You will live angry, but you must receive it. So if I can transfer sickness, why can I not transfer health? Are you seeing that now? That means I can stand close to you and transfer something from me to you. Life. Being the light of men. You see that? That's the concept of whatsoever is born of God. Not whosoever. Whatsoever is born of God can overcome. Not by jacking yourself. And understanding grants you access to that dimension in the spirit. Where you can walk in it so you can come with a challenge you can come with a sickness like some of you are here now trusting god all kinds of impossible situations they've told you it cannot be solved they are right based on their understanding this is a doctor they are not wrong based on their understanding but god's god's manifold wisdom introduces possibilities you see he says with god with God, watch this. I've taught you alone, it is impossible, but with God, with God alone, I cannot call, but with my phone, with in partnership with God, all things, all things, all things are possible. I want you to look at the situation you came here with for the last time tonight. Because in the name of the Lord God of heaven, it will go. Mm. My assignment tonight is to bring it face to face with the power that created the universe. Not the power that governs Nigeria. Not the power that governs UN. 
the power that created the heavens and the earth for he upholds all things by the word of his power number three that's it there mysteries so number one you must know god number two that's redemption and everything that concerns god in the person of jesus number two you must understand the ministry of the holy spirit the third thing you must have access to the word you must crave for accurate understanding number four this is a mystery i believe that has been known by very few and i truly believe with all my heart that is one of the things that god has anointed me to reveal is the mystery of the body the fourth thing you must know if you want to excel is you must understand the mystery of the body of christ this strategy called the body of christ the body of christ is not just people the body of christ many people say the body of christ is not just a church they are people the body of christ is not people the body of christ is a strategy the only strategy capable of birthing the purposes of god is called ecclesia the body of christ the body of christ is not a people it's a strategy that's why he said i will build it i will build it he didn't say i will make it i will build it like a formula like a plan and i will build it in such a way that it will be so formidable the gates of hell will not prevail against it there is a formation that the body of christ is built it is so formidable the gate of hell can only touch members not the body the body was built by a system that cannot be touched by the gate of hell are we together never forget this many people have been robbed of the full dimension of the power of god first corinthians 11 verse 30 remember for this cause many are weak many are sickly it is here for these causes there is only one reason why people are not able to rise to represent the fullness of god he said for this cause many are weak limited for this cause many are sickly and for this cause many sleep when was the last time you went for funeral and they told you somebody died because he did not discern the body that's what killed him please pay attention get my teachings discerning the body that whole series you have to list if you are in ministry here or you are a church leader a deacon you have to listen to it if not you will never rise a body has thou prepared for me it was prepared to be used a formidable strategy that beats hell hands down it's called the body of christ everything is available in the body listen carefully so if it is not available in your life it is available in the body you have to learn that any possibility my life is not manifesting does not define the possibility of god it is only the possibility of my experience but that reality is available are we together now yes son of man can these bones live and ezekiel said this is not a possibility within my frame of reality he says let me show you the body the body this body is a mystery it was built with a formula christ being the chief cornerstone immediately after christ two strange ministries the apostolic and the prophetic then the building rises you must follow that formula to be formidable it is the building of the body so when you see a man telling you you don't need any man in your life don't depend on any man it's only god they are sincere in that they are trying to balance human worship but that's a destructive revelation that will kill you because please listen to my message i'm just doing a quick recap because i'm telling you the things to study we'll begin to pray listen carefully i told you that there are mantles and there are systems remember the teaching yes a system represents a covenant with god that releases a dimension of his possibility within the dispensation of that civilization it's called a system so in every dispensation there is a way and manner god wants to be known and the way he advances 
that knowledge of him is through covenant your relationship with god your spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant so when god wants to release a dimension of him to a generation he finds a man listen he enters a covenant with that man that for as long as that man is alive he represents the spiritual system for releasing that possibility to that dispensation no one alive in that dispensation will taste of that dimension of god without believing or in alignment to that system this is how the kingdom is abraham represents the system of the blessing the journey of a believer's blessing starts from him system are we together now elijah represents god's system of purifying and preparing men for revival elijah is not a man elijah is a system i've taught you this the first manifestation of the spirit of elijah was seen in noah elijah always precedes the great and terrible day of the lord the moment there is a visitation upon a people elijah must come that's why elijah is still alive god's apostolic and prophetic system that prepares men for revival for the move of god is called elijah it's a system the man elijah died he's simply a man named after the system the system continues the antichrist is a system not just a person you see that peter a system that represents faith systems on earth today there are men who are not just human beings but systems when you trace the ministry of the holy spirit it can start from anywhere you choose upon the earth today right now it will end with benny Hinn. you see that benny Hinn is not carrying a mantle he's a system he represents that possibility no one will enter into the healing ministry without honoring what he represents to the body this is called the mystery of discerning the body kenneth copeland today represents god's system of faith and prosperity start from any point in the world you will start moving from mantle to mantle grace to grace and it will land back in him there are many systems like that you will never get this through prayer and fasting no matter how you pray god will lead you to those people he will give you encounters but he will lead you there is a system i have provided it is your alignment with that system that will produce those possibilities how much of the body do you know imagine what would have happened into your life now if you could discern the body discerning the body is different from destiny helpers destiny helpers are not systems destiny helpers they may not even be born again they are just people that god anoints to help you get to your destiny there are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial he says even among the stars one different from another in glory not in shape in glory hallelujah praise the lord if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been healed since if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been blessed since many people want to be rich but they criticize those who represent the systems that deliver that possibility there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will bring you into that possibility because when you scorn the grace that represents that reality you authorize that door to close it only opens to honor not even seats honor if your seat sowing is a communication of that honor then it opens are you seeing that now i can't criticize papa Ia Deboy and bishop oyedeko and one crowds and multitudes is impossible carry posters everywhere it will not happen there is a system this is not publicity it's a spiritual reality so in honor of what they represent i am authorized to access that reality that's why you are here tonight let me tell you something listen carefully you see this thing you call koinonia koinonia is not a ministry koinonia is a system you have to believe this it's a system it's not a movement it's not a fellowship 
is not a group it's a system it's a system that has become a portal to release certain possibilities of God I, I want you to be very hopeful so that when you come you don't have to be afraid there is something about the atmosphere so no matter how far you are you have come to Mount Zion certain things happen this is not just some human bragging a man of God trying to shine his ministry no tonight you are standing face to face with possibilities that are contained in God please listen to me you are standing face to face with a reality that you now possess that can change your ministry your business your family is standing face to face with a challenge and what you are about to watch within the next few minutes is what I call the dominion power of light over darkness the invincibility of the wisdom and the might and the power of God over darkness it will happen at the speed of light converting your prayer request to a testimony it's not trying to believe a reality here and now hello him Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him an altar call quickly right now everyone stand there are people here overflow one two three following us online in this place right now the bible says this life is in his son you don't hear about the son and receive life you meet the son there are people standing here men and women scattered around you are a pastor leader deacon gentleman lady old young rich poor regardless of your status 
Jesus said, ye must be born again. There are people here who have not met Jesus. We have to do this very fast because there will be such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this place. You are here inside and outside. You have heard what I said. And whilst I was speaking, the Spirit of God, the one we so honor, was beginning to minister to you that you must make your ways right with God. And then you've been here and for some reason, you've been one leg in and one leg out. Loved God, was on fire. But different things happened somewhere around your life. And you're here probably standing inside and outside and wondering, man of God, can I join them? Most welcome. I want to count one to five. And um, now this is how we'll do it. I want you to come. The first sets of people can come out. When they come and here is full, then all the others that come will just stand at their various overflows, just close to your projector. But I want to count one to five and I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain. Right now, one. Quickly. Quickly run to Jesus. From the depth of your heart. You can keep standing. You don't have to lie down or kneel down. God bless you. You don't have to kneel down, madam. You can stand. Quickly. Two. Don't think about it. Run to Jesus. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. Man of God, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. I remember coming out for altar call one day. But right now, I'm not sure. No, if you are not sure, you have to come out. When a woman is pregnant, she knows. You are not sure, join them. Something is wrong with what happened to you. Three, are you coming? Apostle, I'm trying to come out, but my neighbor is stopping me. We rebuke that spirit trying to stop you. Come out, come to Jesus. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Let this be the beginning of the miracle service for you. I think we have enough people inside now. Every other person that comes, just direct them to their various overflows outside. Those coming from outside, you can wait there now. In every moment, I'm away. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Hallelujah. Madam, look at me. You, you love Jesus Christ? Come. I'm seeing you. You are not working well. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with her? Who brought her? Because I looked at you and I saw you limping and then I saw in the realm of the spirit severe pain. Come. What's wrong with you? From where are you? Program. So she now called me that I should come and attend the program. So For I have diabetes and ulcer. My back pain here from the back here down to my leg. Everything. Yes. I'm feeling the pain very well. That is why she asked me to come and do the program with you people here. So that is why I came here. Mommy, look at me. Every one of them. You heard what I said? Everyone will leave you here and you'll go back to Abuja. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Of course, if it doesn't work, your sister will not ask you to come. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you people to pray. Join them to pray. We're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ and all that devil will go. The ultimate cure is not the prayer for healing. The ultimate cure is Jesus. A man was brought to Jesus crippled and he says, Thy sins be forgiven. And people say, Ah, what is this? And Jesus said, Which is easier? Hi! That means to be healed is easier than to be saved. So it's not as easy it's not just recitation are we together mama i'll pray for you go back and join them those of you standing here the overflow lift your right hand and sincerely you are not reciting a point from the depth of your heart i want you to say this after me say lord jesus no some of you are crying but don't worry jesus sees your tears say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i believe that you are the son of God 
I believe that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me and tonight I receive your life I receive your grace I receive your spirit I declare that I'm born again I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus victory is given to me over sin over the flesh and over the world in Jesus name please keep your hands lifted I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the power of sin the power of the flesh and the world over you is broken right now I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the life of God is at work in you beginning from today the Lord transforms your life by his spirit in the name of Jesus Christ now I want you to do something for me very quickly please cooperate with all the people um, whether outside any of the overflows there is a gentleman waving his hands some um, of the uh, ushers there i want you to just follow them quietly and then give them your correct details very quickly this is so that we'll follow you up and then we'll get to see you so do that very very quickly very quickly madam i will pray for you you go and write your name and come back while we are waiting for them please make sure we are going to be very fast you see that our time is gone so it's going to be a very quick walk very quick walk we're going straight to the business of the night and i want you to believe it doesn't take time it only takes god it doesn't take time it only takes god very very quickly very very quickly we're going to trust the lord to please ushers coordinate them very quickly and uh, let's have them back because we want to pray now are we together everyone say after me in the name of jesus Please be serious in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every spirit, every force, every influence standing against God's word over my life, I declare that you are under judgment tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and pray, everyone. Shala bras kada baladia. Shabratas kala brato shobrige de balada balada ba. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are always spirits behind the tragedies of men. Whether or not you know, it is there. And until those influences are taken out of your life, victory is far from your reach. Are we together? Number two, I want you to decree and declare that the fire of God must fall upon every challenge you came here with. Say, Lord, visit it one by one until there is total victory don't let the challenge don't let the challenge limit you take your eyes away from it and pray are you praying inside and outside Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one.
more time. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Lift your hands, everyone. Just lift your hands and be silent. Such a strong anointing in this place tonight. Lift your hands and just be silent. Please. I'm seeing two numbers, five and one. And the Lord is saying there are 51 people here. 51 people. He's bringing massive deliverance to their families. I want you to bring them out. 51 people. Don't shout. Don't do nothing. Just keep your hands. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands and the power of God, that unction for deliverance will move like wildfire all through the overflows. Right now, I stretch my hands in the name of the Lord God whose I am and whom I serve. Right now, I release the ministry of angels. Mighty deliverance right now. Bring them out. Shalabrakataya. Zapras kata prakatele kati alabas. Zopre keta li pras kabariata. Embre koto shoto pare keta. The fire of God is visiting individuals for their families. I see fire burning. That's what I'm seeing. Bring them out. Just keep your hands lifted. The angel of His presence moving inside and outside. Moving inside and outside. Please quickly, let's have them. Shala pakurata, legretos kubri shala bariata ko. Overflow one. I see a strange activity of angels. Strange deliverance. Shigala para koto soto balada. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty in God. You reign. You ancient Zion is king. Kadosh. Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Second in Akata. Keep your hands lifted. Malekete pekete lakaya. Ay, 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 ay. Mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. Help that lady, please. You are mighty young. Break forth down fountains of the deep. And with Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Keep your hands lifted. I'm seeing snakes. That's what I'm seeing. Just flying up. Snakes. I'm seeing many ladies being delivered from this influence. Right now, I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus. I put the word of God upon this prophecy. In the name of Jesus. I release upon it the power to perform. Shakatakata. Those influences. In the name of Jesus, I release judgment, 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 judgment upon every strange influence, limiting the life of God's people. Break forth down fountains of the deep and weep and weep and weep at all. You reign, you reign, Kadosh, you are mighty on the Hallelujah. Now lift your hands, Jesus. I'm seeing gates, gates with chains. One shout is what will bring that gate down. Are you ready? Just a shout of the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Gates of limitation. 
stagnations, gates of stagnation be opened by the unction of the Spirit. Gates be opened. Ephata be opened. The gate must open. Tonight is a miracle service. I prophesied the two lift gate be open. The two lift gate. Many of you don't know what is happening in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, I see gates, gates of destinies, gates of possibilities that are being held by witchcraft, gates over families. No progress, no results. I come tonight with an apostolic and a prophetic anointing. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Listen. Listen to me. A gate is what gives a man access access into a place access out of a place the bible says to open the doors of prison there are men who are moving but they are under prison there's nothing hear me you may be here listening to me there's nothing you do that works no matter how you try seek advice it will not work no matter what you do you are not bad you are not lazy but there is a spirit but right now lift your hands in the name of jesus one more time i come against the spirit that stand as gatekeepers over the victory of people over the life of people at the count of three i want you to shout that name the name that is a key that opens the gate one two three open it I open it I open it online outside I command it to open I command it to open locked by ancestry locked by divination locked by necromancy and projection manipulation of the constellations I command in the name of he that holds the key of David I command that door be open that no power can shut be sensitive tonight the spirit of God is moving one of the ushers one of the ushers you are an usher but the unction of the spirit help her visiting your family Visiting your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a lady quickly. There's no time to speak. Our time is gone. We have to pray for the sick. But I'm seeing a lady. You have two sisters. Two of them are barren. They are married. No children. Please, where are you? It's part of your prayer request. You are wearing a black dress. You are the one. Come. Ah, there's witchcraft in your family. Look at me. Come. You are a great lady, but there is terrible witchcraft in your family. There is a lady again the Lord is opening my eyes I don't know why this happens I'm seeing a map Benway 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 people get ready Benway 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 I see Benway and the Lord says stretch your hands and bring deliverance to men in Benway I stretch my hands right now the anointing of the spirit visiting people Benway 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 by the spirit of God by the spirit of God hear me and I'm hearing in my spirit break the covenant of motherhood I don't know what this means but this is something that has to do with a covenant 
involving women I arrest it right now in the name of Jesus I see fire dropping right now people from Benway you are from Benway you come under this influence please help that Benway Benway the spirit of the living God the spirit of the living God traveling to Benway breaking covenant I speak to the soil of that land release the destinies tied with you listen what I'm seeing is not good the Lord is taking me to a vision and I'm standing and I'm seeing black ropes around trees this is Otuko black ropes tied around trees and the Lord tells me that the destiny of men were tied to those trees in the name of Jesus Christ, lift your hands. Shabre keta skabatiya, man pre to koso At the count of three, may the fire that the God of Elijah commanded, I command it right now upon every shrine, every activity of darkness. In the name of Jesus, let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Hallelujah. The supernatural I've taught you operates only in partnership with five elements. Listen. Without one or more of these elements, the supernatural cannot find expression. Guy, I'm seeing a wild this is a serpent. I'm looking at this person and I'm not seeing a human being again. I'm seeing a serpent. I stretch my hands. The Bible says, For the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now listen carefully. Five elements of the supernatural. Number one is light. The supernatural cannot find expression until it can use the medium of light. Number two, the air, sound. The supernatural cannot find expression until there is a medium of sound. Number three, the earth. The earth is a universal point of contact. Every living thing makes contact with it. Number three. Are we together? Number four, water. The mystery that bears witness. Water is not an entity. Water is history. Water is a memory bank of the realm of the spirit. Contained within it are more mysteries than we understand. Number five, fire. A mystery entity that does not run away from anything and yet consumes everything purifies and destroys can make and kill the only personality with the quality of fire is God can make a life and destroy it would destroy another thing and in it lift another thing purify gold and destroy the impurities I want us to use one of the elements of the supernatural because everyone is standing on the ground I want to pray for you. The Lord is asking me to break delay. Please just follow me. We are coming to the sick people. But just follow me tonight. Let's walk circumspectly. I'm seeing people whose feet have been tied down. They cannot move. You are here. No matter what you do, there is no progress. This is the story of your family. Look at me. The Lord wants to visit you first, even before your family. Your two sisters, they are married, no child. Are you married? You are not married. We have to pray. I don't know if you believe what I'm telling you, but God is raising you to be a savior in your family. Believe this thing, no. You may not look like it, but it is the spirit of Deborah. But first and foremost, you must be delivered first. God is not finished with her. I command that devil, go. There is no hiding in his presence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands, my dear. In the name of Jesus, the Lord God whom I serve, I command the reign of witchcraft as I hold you right now over your sisters, over your life and over your family. I command them to be broken right now. I release upon you grace for restoration in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you that grace of Deborah that causes women to rise with the strength of men. I release that grace upon you. I want you to go and tell your sisters 
the Lord brings a visitation to them. Even as he did to Hannah at Shiloh, the Lord comes for them with strange visitations in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now all those under the anointing, I command the spirits. Any spirit that has been located by God must leave the victims. Therefore in the name of Jesus and at the count of three, you know my voice. I represent his majesty. At the count of three, you must let them go now and forever. One, two, three, be gone. Go! Out of their lives, destinies, now and forever. Out of their lives, out of their destinies, I prophesy recovery. I prophesy recovery. I prophesy recovery. For when a thief is caught, he's made to pay back tenfold. I command recovery in the name of Jesus. Let them go. There is no hiding, for his light shines upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, if there is any project you are involved in, lift your hand. Any project, business project, building project, please just lift your hands. Before I pray, we pray the prayer that will release speed. Projects. I'm standing and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord walking across this place and I'm standing here and he's saying I should stretch my hands here there is a visitation that is coming for the people here therefore I stretch my hands Lord your will be done I don't know those who you are bringing perfection to them right now in the name of Jesus I release that unction and that grace everyone within this vicinity let there be supernatural deliverances and supernatural miracles help them in the name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ now everyone is standing I want to pray for you please listen there is such a thing as advancement in a man's life it's not a doctrine it's an experience where a man can make progress spiritually, financially, business-wise. If you are in a position for a long time, it's a sign that something is wrong. Are we together? It says, ye have come past this mountain long enough. Then it tells you the formula. The door is in the north. It says, turn northwards. Turn northwards. You have come past this mountain long enough. I want you to stand on the ground. I see physical fire rising and sweeping, consuming people's feet. Some of you, as this is happening, you will hear the sounds of physical chains. Literally, physical chains. This will happen. I want us to shout the name of Jesus three times. That's what the Holy Ghost is telling me. I will lead you and you will shout it. The third time, the chains of delay and stagnation will, will break open. Many of you physically, physically you feel it happening. Thank you, Jesus. Let the word of God come upon this prophecy. Are you ready now? Number one. Are you ready? Number two. Libra Katuso to Barikata. Now I want you to get ready. That grace that came upon Elijah and caused him to run overtaking the chariot of Ahaz speed and advancement is coming on people right now are you ready? shout Jesus receive it now receive it now let the earth deliver to your destiny the keys of advancement I command you to advance I command you to move forward I break limitations. I break limitations. Kapare keta shiata, la bres kata bras kadali vasata. I command advancement. Outside advancement, the overflows advancement. May that anointing hit you. Advancement, 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 advancement. 
in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, no power can stop you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than many. Help me. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Stretch your hands towards me. Don't lift it up. Stretch it towards me. There is, there is going to be an activation of strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. Gift. The time for impartation will come. But fire is living. And it's coming upon people and the Lord said, let them stretch their hands. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands back to you. In the name of Jesus. Gifts, gifts, gifts. Don't man gifts. Don't man gifts. Where is it? I call it forth now. Don't man gifts. Don't man gifts. You may not know it's there. I'm not talking of the gifts of the spirit. I'm talking of potentials. Gifts, gifts. I stir it up right now. Like a well, I command it. Like the axe head, I command it to float right now. I command it to float right now. Gifts that will bring you honor. Gifts. So toko 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 reke teke te. Gifts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gifts. There is a lady. I'm looking at you now in the realm of the spirit. You are dressed in something that looks like orange. Like the house are dressing from your head to who is that? Who is that? Come from this row. Jesus praise. What's your name? Veronica. From where? I came from Abuja. You came from Abuja. As I stood here, I was hearing your prayer. And you were saying, Lord, let this man of God locate me. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that two things now. Number one is captivity and reproach is being rolled away from your life. That's the first thing that is happening to you. Captivity and reproach. Captivity and reproach. Inside, inside the main auditorium, from where people sit in front, count nine lines, nine rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The power of God is coming on somebody on that row right now. Inside. Inside. It's a strange miracle coming for that person. The ninth row. Supernatural manifestation of the power of God. My sister, what do you want the Lord to do in your life? Uh-uh. You are just generalizing. Huh? I'm looking at you and then I'm seeing your heart and I'm seeing... Should I say it? Do you believe you can are you married huh where's your husband did you come with him what do you want the lord to do for him see this man is your real prayer point. that's that's you want the lord to honor him and what what is he doing now i'm seeing him leaving that place oh, to another place that has been your desire go and tell him that a man of god has prophesied to him that he's going to leave that place supernaturally supernaturally and that he should stop wasting his time over the person he's calling all the time to help him that's not where his help will come from go and tell him that the lord said he can raise help anywhere in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen there is a lady here in this room in this um place i'm hearing grace please let's hurry up quickly so i can leave this place we have to pray for the sick i'm hearing grace grace who is that you are down at that side grace who is that wearing red grace that's okay grace your name is grace
this is not this is is it Maimuna? Is it Maimuna or something? I'm hearing a name Maimuna. 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 I wish we had time today, but we have to pray for the sick. I want us to leave this very fast because I'm going to counsel. Well, just leave her. I found a person, but but you come. My dear, I want to pray. Who is this? No, 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 no. It's not just any grace. I pray for you. My dear, lift your hands. God wants to visit your family. There are four people here. A very strange unction for revelation and teaching is coming upon you now. No, 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 no. Four of you right now. A strong power is hitting you right now. Just in this, this place outside. I don't know what it is about this place. Maybe the miracle services will start coming here now. There is there's real faith in this place. My dear, I end it now. I end it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Keep your hands on her stomach. I end it now. I command that reproach taken from your life. In the name of Jesus. Don't come out for social reasons, but I'm seeing a lady here. You have suffered a very terrible infection. This is a, a woman issue. A terrible infection. This thing... You have treated it and done everything you know to do but it has refused to go this is witchcraft it's not just a normal infection you have spent your money but right now the lord is saying i should prophesy to you that it comes to an end complete end right now in the name of jesus christ complete end i stretch my hands four people right now here in this world lord where are they one is a lady three are gentlemen Step into that dimension. That's right. Help them. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on. There is a mother here. God wants to wipe her tears. Madam, who is a gala here? Hold on. You are a gala. From where? From where? Okay. Where is that? Is there a place like that in the gala land? Huh? in Kogi State so that you don't come and tell us lies if, if you are not from there just wait there is your turn to come from lift your hands I'm seeing an attack on your life and your family and the Lord is too free madam where is your child did you come with your child There's no time to waste, please. I'll just pray for you so that we can go. In the name of witchcraft, now. In on you right now. Jesus Christ. In the name Jesus Christ. Lift your hand. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is bringing into my life strange testimonies lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice those outside are you praying lift your voice and begin to pray Kai one of the things listen hold on I'm seeing now I want you to believe it I just looked up and I started hearing the cry of I see babies just fill the room listen carefully I just lifted, I wanted to move and I just lifted my eyes. And the Lord told me that one of the major miracles he's doing tonight is giving people children. If you are standing in for barrenness, whether you are in any overflow, please come in. I want to minister to you by myself. Barrenness, only barrenness, please. Husband and wife, if you are standing for barrenness, except you are standing in for someone. If you are standing alone, you must be married. Praise God. If you are standing alone, you must be married. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. You can go, you can go, Pastor Alpha. Now we are going to pray. And while they are doing that, let's buy time. Ushers, move around all the overflows. Make sure you collect the request of everybody. I noticed overflow three. There are a few people attending to them there. So let's have people 
You see why we need more ushers and we need more people. Say after me, Father. Father. Everyone shout it, Father. Father. We, receive we receive your visitation. In the name of Jesus, we receive miracles, signs, and wonders. Now, please accept they ask you. You don't have to tell them what is wrong. Don't worry. The hand of God is here to bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the praise. Those online, I want you to connect by faith and trust the power of God to touch you. We have very few minutes to do this. And in the name of Jesus, we'll be done. No matter what the issue is, as we touch you, start checking yourself. You can register your testimony. We'll take it on Friday. Whether you are standing in for someone, don't worry. The power of God is there to touch you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. Do you know why I came here? Because I saw that this woman, your issue is not just healing. Hold on. I saw the, her holding pictures and a passport. And then I'm looking at it. And I saw a plane. Is it something like you were staying outside the country? Is that true? Yes, sir. Because I'm seeing a woman, a plane, bringing you. Is that true? Uh -uh. And the Lord is opening my eyes. I'm seeing another vision. I'm seeing a quarrel between you and a man. Like your husband. And that man drove you. Yes, sir. He drove? Yes, sir. From where? From abroad. Where is abroad? Qatar. From where? Where is he? This is you? Oh my God. This is a baby. Look at me. Why did he drive you away? You see why prophecy is powerful. Look at this woman. Come, madam. I looked at these things and the Lord told me that this woman needs help. I know I'm taking time, but let's attend. Madam, don't cry. It's okay. Where were you before? No other man. We are together in our blood. We are together. Are, were you married? Yes, sir. You are from where? Benway State, sir. You are from Benway? Yes, sir. You see, I told you what God was saying about Benway. You you married him and went abroad? Yes, sir. Then what happened? He said as you come back, my paper is having issue. Not knowing that he went and married secretly from my community. So the he married me. another woman? Yeah, from my same community, sir. He's staying abroad with her? Yes, he drove you away with the baby. Yes, sir. No, he, uh, he drove me when the pregnancy was one week. <laughs> Did he know you were pregnant? No, sir. Immediately I took it. He now said to come see, back. Man, listen. This this is what we, we keep saying again and again. Please listen to me. Now I don't mean no disrespect, but you see why ladies will tell you people. To marry people who are born again not just people who have money huh don't let anybody just come and show you one shoe one bag and just carry you around like that it must be godly look at what this man did for this woman one week and left her with this innocent child so where are you staying now i'm staying out in abuja so my it's sister. from abuja you came yes sir what do you want God to do for you? I want God to bring him back for me, sir. He married another woman. Yes, sir. She knew you were his wife. Yes, sir. And she still came and married. Yes, my dad is also here, sir. Where's your dad? Daddy. Please come, sir. Oh, he cannot walk. After my marriage, I now send stroke to him, sir. He's from okay, Benway too. Yes, sir. Why am I seeing light leaving you to this man? Come. What's your relationship with her? He's my stepbrother. I'm a first, uh, I mean, stepbrother, the firstborn of the family. You are the firstborn? Yes, sir. From where? From a business state. You are suffering. Bye. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Nothing is working your life. Yes, sir. At all. You need the hand of God. Look at your father. Look at this man. Look at this dear man. You see this? This, brothers and sisters, believe it or not, is what witchcraft looks like. Are you seeing this? Whether you are in Qatar or wherever, if that spirit is not destroyed, this is what it will do. Because I stood and I looked at her and I saw a plane carrying a woman. But she didn't look. 
if you see this woman does she look like somebody who has gone abroad i'm not insulting you you can see that this woman was not even treated well suffered with the man now we went abroad and sent her back when this baby now if we decide to carry this baby and take care of this baby when this baby becomes responsible the man will now call the court and come and say he wants his child back then they will now accuse men of god and accuse everybody and say everybody is stupid you are using the baby to make to get power you see why sometimes we avoid these things it's not because we cannot help people honestly it's because sometimes the media right now are experts at stigmatizing men of god you do anything to try to help this baby now you'll be in trouble are we together Holy help me you're the God of awesome ones. Hey, you stood up your power. The Lord is opening my eyes. The same spirit that made that man drive you is making him fight with this woman now. They are not even. No, 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 no. I'm not seeing peace. Huh? I'm not seeing peace. I'm seeing a situation where this man is coming and checking the woman's phone. And then I'm seeing another man's text. And the man is giving her a dirty slap. Slap on her face. The Bible said, What God has joined. What's his name? Simon, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that created the heavens and the earth, I call you back to your wife. In the name of Jesus, may you encounter a man of God and an anointing that will save you and deliver you there. And I declare in the name of Jesus, this baby will not be a bastard. Baby, I speak to you. Every foundational thing programmed in your spirit as a baby, we cancel it right now. Madam, look at me. I decree and declare the favor that was on Esther that made Hadassah look at her once and had to call her to be his queen. May that favor come upon you. Listen, don't go to any native doctor. You hear me because i'm seeing one mama coming to you in abuja and she's telling you that there's somebody she told you he's a man of god he's a native doctor don't go anywhere huh? and number two anybody that says you should bring one naira what did i say one naira for prayer just thank him and walk away if, if this poor woman you still collect money from her for prayer then you must be a very wicked person isn't it in the name of Jesus, he will return with testimony. My brother, come. Are you working? What do you want God to do in your life? Um, I'm a pastor. So when I, I mean, God called me into ministry. So in the field, the back to the, I mean, the things so tough, the, the attacks and the foundation, it became so strong. So I took up. I, I couldn't stay. But up, up to now, God is still calling me back to where I serve him. I've been serving him. To where, where were you serving? In Kogi State. No. You need mentorship, you need covering, you need impartation. You don't just get up like that and go into ministry. God saved you, they would have killed you like a chicken. There are rules to this thing. Eh? It's not just because you touch somebody and he fell down, you get up and go to Kogi State. Do you know what pursued you back? Eh? It's the mercy of God, it's not witchcraft. They would, you would have died like a chicken. Please listen, I'm not scaring you. But there are systems. Don't get up out of zeal and just say i am anointed be careful as powerless as satan is is your understanding that this the powers him if you don't have that understanding you can be anointed and your life will be destroyed praise the lord my brother hold my hands i'm not just seeing you doing ministry truly you need help eh? you need help after service come and see this man pastor alpha eh? after service come and see him he will talk with you and guide you and train you and help you in the name of jesus christ a time of prophecy and activations.
Some of you are here because you desire higher levels of unction. Your ministries, your lives, your businesses. The prophetic word of God is very powerful when there is grace back in it. Because it does not only reveal, it creates. Are we together? In the next about two or three minutes, I want your heart to genuinely and desperately be open. Be open. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a grace walking in this gentleman. You are the first. I know you are doing protocol work, but you are the first to receive this grace. I see a grace on two of you. Supernatural grace of the Holy Ghost. Taking you to a new dimension. Hallelujah. Benga, come. Grace for another dimension of fire. Lift your hands. Grace. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. You speak and there is power of performance. Power of performance. Power of performance. Power of performance. No word will be empty. You speak and there is grace and the power of performance. Hallelujah. Someone come and hold. Victor, come. Come and hold them. Um, somebody. Grace. Supernatural influence and wisdom and victory in a strange dimension a dimension you have never seen in your life in the name of Jesus supernatural grace I open up that level grace in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Where shall they? We're rounding up. They are doing their... Please, someone, hold her. I don't want... Hold the child. Speaking, we have just a minute or two. Hold her. Make sure that... Ladies, you come and hold her. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is quickening the power of sight. The grace to see. Grace to see. The grace to see. Make sure you are holding our well. The grace to see. In the name of Jesus. Penny, you are taking back fresh fire. Fresh fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Fresh fire. I'm not, it's not like I'm just speaking people. This is this is just by the Spirit. Come. Lord is bringing glory on you. Fresh fire even upon your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, you see, hold on. We're out of time, but Pastor, house on the rock, come. You have been desiring something for a long time. Come. God is giving it to you in this season. In the name of Jesus, may that fire, may that grace, take a drink of that wine in the name of Jesus. Fresh unction, fresh unction, capacity, open up your capacity in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, there's a heavy spirit under that small girl. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just place it on hand. Leave it. Leave it there. In the name of Jesus, judgment upon that devil, foul spirit. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but I want you to receive. Let me start with the men of God. You are in ministry here. It's time to take something heavy and something genuine. 
Let me pray. Jaffa, come. Ejimi, come. I'm seeing a, a new, a truly new grace and a new wine. New grace and a new wine. A supernatural dimension. Dimension. This grace will speak in unbelievable ways. Lord, bring him into that experience. In the name of Jesus. Truly bring him into that experience. I open up, I open up, I open up closed fountains. I open up now. Closed fountains. I open up now. Fire. Fresh grace for influence. Influence, influence, business influence. New grace, new dimensions of wealth. Influence. Commanding miracles. Strange miracles. Collect that child from hope. Collect that child from hope. In the name of Jesus, fresh fire hope. I activate that dimension. Fresh fire. In the name of Jesus, God is giving you eyes that see strange dreams, revealing direction for people's lives. In the name of Jesus, where's Aaron? Aaron, where's Aaron? In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord says, I should tell you, seasons of reward are before you. Seasons of great and strange reward. Father, let it be by the power of your spirit. By the power of your spirit. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. God, something is coming strong. Go. The unction for new levels in ministry. At the count of three, if you are here in ministry, there is a call of God upon your life. One, two, that fire comes now. Take that fire now. Take that fire. A new level of ministry. A new level of power. A new level of grace. Never to be buried. Never to be buried. Never to be buried. Never to be buried. Where is Yerima, head of department media? Please come quickly. Quickly, I'm praying. Where is he? Oh, that's him there. In the name of Jesus, the Lord says he's bringing you honor, untold honor, untold honor by the Spirit of the living God. Untold honor, untold honor, untold honor. Now I decree and declare, Jordan, where's Jordan? Jordan bookstore. I hear restoration. Where are you? Restoration fire. That restoration fire. In the name of Jesus. Everything the canker worm, the palmer worm has stolen. Restoration. In the name of Jesus. Now I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God comes upon you. And you begin to run like Elijah. I prophesy speed. Receive it now. Receive it now. Speed, speed, speed. Speed by the unction of the Spirit. Speed by the unction of the Spirit. Speed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every helper of your destiny that is supposed to show up and partner with you and endorse you to the next level in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands and I place an unction on your life receive of their ministry now receive of their ministry now receive of their ministry now where's Pastor Alpha's wife just hold her there she's heavy so in the name of Jesus the Lord is saying, have I not said I will bring you favor? It will manifest. God is bringing favor. After you give birth to your child, pastor, your family will step into a strange level of favor. It will be at the commencement of this boy's birth, or this child. The moment the child is born, in the name of Jesus Christ, there will be strange miracles. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I pray for you. The kind of glory and honor you have never seen upon your life. I declare, receive it now. Receive it right now. 
all your tithes your giving god has released the blessings but something has hijacked it in the realm of the spirit i command a release of your harvest i command a release of your harvest i command a release of your harvest whatever was not working in your life before you came here i decree by the spirit of the living god go back to it and watch it work in a way that will shock you whoever opens his mouth to mock your god goes down immediately i say it again whoever opens his mouth to mock your god goes down immediately anyone here been eyed by the spirit of death to make sure that the earth kills you to make sure that you die or any bad news from your family i cancel it right now in the name of jesus christ as you step into the month of may by the power that is in the name of jesus i declare in one month alone in one month he said have you ever had this that a city is born in one day he said but as soon as zion travels she shall put forth a son i declare in one month this month of may a dimension of the ministry of the holy spirit to bring you strange results receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus I pray for your family members in the name that is above all names if they have never testified from January till now I command testimonies from next month I pray for those who are students you wrote your exams you cannot rest you are afraid whatever went wrong I change it now whatever went wrong I change it now I don't care what went wrong I change it now anyone here trusting God for a job by May miracle service as surely as the God of heaven lives may God shake the heavens and the earth and give you your job and you are here you are walking and they've refused to promote you whoever sits on your promotion gets out of his office in the name of jesus christ any human being on this earth who has fraternized with the elements of the supernatural to limit your life i pray now i command all the elements of the supernatural to fight them the same way the stars fought for deborah I command the earth to fight them. I command their success to fight them. Anyone who has trivialized your grace and neglected what you represent to make sure that doors don't open for you, I decree and declare in their presence the Lord will lift you any prayer life here that has died because of carelessness carnality whatever it is sin that has been responsible for destroying your prayer life your passion you were on fire for God but there's laziness carelessness lukewarmness in the name of Jesus like the hair of Samson I command a sevenfold restoration for you now. Prayer fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever has destroyed your word life, no passion. You carry your Bible, you don't even know what to study. You make up your mind that you will study. There is a grace that helps men. I pray in the name of Jesus. May that enabling grace come upon your life now. May that enabling grace come upon your life now. The final prayer I want to pray for you. Listen. 
there is a name that God is called the lifter of men hear me don't let any man lie to you that he can lift you on his own a man can receive nothing except it is given to him do you know lifting is a sign that God is with you yes read your Bible lifting to leave your current position to another is not a sign of pigmanism it truly is a sign that God is with you read your Bible there is nobody that God was with who he did not lift God who can pick a man from a donkey many of us it's not like you are doing bad but where you are you have been there for a long time everybody is rising and they come and see you spiritually financially please don't let anybody indoctrinate you that lifting is not of God if you are not lifted you will be frustrated at a point because the only way to bless others is as you are rising therefore I speak to your life the God who has gloriously lifted this ministry the God who by his spirit has helped us given us a voice connected us to over 44 nations of the earth supernaturally by his spirit I pray in the name of Jesus wherever on the surface of the earth your lifting is tied to I decree and declare Maraca dos calibre getelator mare dos copre teke labariatata be lifted now in the name of Jesus be lifted now in the name of Jesus I speak to your business whatever you do be lifted now in the name of Jesus I speak to your ministry be lifted now in the name of Jesus they are taking for a prey and none say it restore I say restore I prophesy restore in the name of Jesus wave your hands and give Jesus all the praise hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you